Trish. My engagement to you is officially dissolved. Pardon? Dissolved? What could he mean by such a thing? Is he suggesting that... How could he? And again, deep inside, I felt this coming. Looking so 
does a human like you have with me? Am I to assume that you're Lord Claude Jean Elmire? That's correct. In that case, I've come to make you an offer. I must ask you. Will you marry me, pretty please? Huh? Am I mistaken? Or did a human just propose to me? Growing up, I lived an ideal life as the youngest child of a duke. However, because I was a girl, and because I wasn't quite as strong as my brothers, I could never keep up with them, no matter how hard I tried. For the longest time, I felt I had no worth. Then I turned eight. Prince Cedric proposed to me, and my world changed. It was the first time anyone believed that I could accomplish something. The idea of becoming Empress consumed my every waking thought. I threw myself into my studies, so I could be a wise and strong ruler. Before long, I was called an arrogant heiress who believed she was better than everyone else simply for being the Prince's fiancé. I wonder if there was more I could have done to make myself likable, to seem vulnerable. Maybe things would have been different. His Lordship is not upset. The lightning strike was the result of his surprise. Does that mean he wasn't... angry with me? He's right. I've seen you do much worse over much less. That doesn't explain why you treated her injuries. I don't need a reason. But you're certain that she wishes to marry you? I remember. He has two aides, doesn't he? Keith the human, to and Beelzebub the well. demon. Only until she wakes up. There's a chance she was sent to me as a trap, or perhaps she's a spy. Who, me? I assure you, I came here of my own free will. Claude Jean Elmire, Cedric's half-brother. His demonic nature revealed itself when he was only ten years old. That got the poor kid stripped of his inheritance as heir. The humans and demons agreed to a truce, and he was brought here to live in an abandoned castle. Should his hatred for humanity ever awaken him, he'll transform into the final boss that kills Eileen in the game. To avoid that fate, there's but one thing to do. My only desire is to marry you! I know I'll make you happy! Remove her at once. Well, I would be delighted to leave just as soon as you agree to our engagement. But I've only just met you, so how could you? I, I mean, is it possible that you're in love with me? <laughs> no. Uh, excuse me, my lord. Could you dial back the tornado? You dare to make such a request of me mere moments after Cedric dissolves your... Listen to me. I am more than aware of how this might appear. But do you expect me to spend my days crying over what I lost? I refuse to waste another second of my precious life thinking about him! And that's why you're courting a demon lord instead? Uh, court you? Why, my lord, if I was simply looking to court you, I could easily... I hope you'll forgive me for appearing so disheveled. I will return another time. There is no need for that. Now you have no reason to return at all. So go away. I'll treasure this forever. I've always wanted a magical dress. It's so lovely. Did you just cast another spell? <laughs> Be gone. <laughs> Using magic to send me back home. You win this time. I'm glad to see you're looking well given the circumstances. It's a shame this is out of our control. He's already given up. 
As the Emperor's Prime Minister, I figured he'd at least try to help me! You've received an invitation from Prince Cedric and the Lady Lilia. In two months, they intend to hold a ball where they will formally announce their engagement. It seems they would like you to sign the nullification of your previous engagement at that time. Would they now? He wants an even larger audience for my rejection? It would appear so. Though Lady Lilia was polite enough to include a letter of her own as well. Then I suppose I'll go. If they're looking for a fight, it would be my pleasure to oblige them. No turning back now! I have to win over Lord Claude no matter what! Wait, what? How have I been going in circles all day? Don't tell me that's how magical barriers work. Oh dear, it's such a shame! I guess I brought these cookies with me for nothing! This too! Servants deserve the same dignity as their master. So I have brought this bow with me as a gift for whoever might speak on my behalf. Think of it as the symbol of the gatekeeper. Symbol of the gatekeeper, you say? She's telling the truth. Delicious! I love chocolate! What shall we do? Perhaps we could head inside. Wait, did you add something to that cookie? Why, yes. Nothing bad. Just a little something I hoped might change your mind about me. I love potion. <laughs> You're absolutely ridiculous. I just received word that I've been invited to attend the ball two months from now. And I was hoping that I might be able to persuade you to escort me. What does the love potion have to do with that? After the outcome of our previous meeting, I assumed that you would turn me down without it. I was going for a fait accompli. Demon Lord, we've got a problem! Hello again, Almond. Don't call me that, it's stupid! Ignore her. What happened? <gasps> It's the Fenrir Cup, my lord! It's not in the forest! It appears to have escaped from the second floor to the east, and has already made it past the barrier. Do you think it could be headed for the school? What if the students get their hands on it? I'll retrieve it at once. But if any humans were to see you, it would only serve to escalate the situation even further. Allow me to help. Uh -huh. I'm familiar with the school's territory, and I should be able to locate it quickly. It may be a cop, but it's still a Fenrir. It'll tear you to pieces in an instant. If that's the case, please allow me to take this. Your scent might have a calming effect on the creature. Good thought. But what reason do you have to aid me? I can't help but feel sorry for the poor thing. 
But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't hoping to have you in my debt as well. What do you mean, in your debt? Well, just that. I do believe I can help, so let me grant your wish. Don't fail me. Don't fail me. My goodness. It's rather nice to have someone depend on you. Besides, if a child is missing, you have to find them. savage demon onto school grounds in order to attack Lilia. And you were willing to believe that I would do something so ridiculous? Who knows what you're capable of? Wait! I don't believe that Lady Eileen would do something so awful! Please, Prince Cedric? I'm willing to look past this because Lilia asked me to. Leave before I change my mind. But look at her hand! She's hurt! That's her fault. And she's overstayed her welcome. Let's go, Marcus. <laughs> How pathetic. Hearing that from him doesn't hurt anymore. He was over kindness a long time ago. Oh. <laughs> Why is she here? The demon lord. I thought he wasn't supposed to leave the forest. Goodness, brother. What brings you all this way? Eileen Loren Dotrish. Uh, huh? I owe you thanks for what you have done tonight. You were willing to risk your life to aid the Fenrir Cub without fear for your own safety. You took the blame for a crime you did not commit in order to prevent a war between demons and humans. <laughs> As the Demon Lord, please accept my utmost thanks. He came here just to help me, to explain what really happened. But why in the world would he do that? He has nothing to gain. May I escort you back to your estate? you make that appear? You'll find I'm full of surprises. Huh? It's beautiful! <laughs> you almost look like an ordinary girl gazing out the window like that. 
usual. Though you've been through much, I've yet to see you shed a tear or make an excuse. You're strong. But I still don't understand why you would want to marry me. I'm not convinced you'd believe me if I gave you the real reason why. I might be more understanding than you think. <laughs> if you're really sure, then I'll tell you. This entire world and everyone in it are actually part of an Otome game I played in my previous life! I'm one of the villain characters, and if this doesn't go my way, you end up turning into a giant dragon and then killing me! It's quite obvious. I see what's going on here. <sighs> you enjoy making a <gasps> fool out of me! No, please! of your engagement, your pharmaceutical and agricultural businesses will be taken over by Prince Cedric. <gasps> First he dishonored me, and now he's stealing my life's work? This is your comeuppance for the contracts you carelessly created. Unfortunately, this will cost our family much. I... I'm incredibly sorry, Father. I'm willing to dismiss the issue under the circumstance you recoup the losses before the ball. But that's only two months from now. I raised my daughter to be a fighter, not some sap who wallows in her worries. Now hammer away, darling. I can tell Father is serious. If things progress at this rate, at the boatloads of money that thief of a prince stole from me and my family. Hey! Long time! Jasper! A good day to you, sir. You're surprisingly cheerful. Is it true that engagement of yours fell through? The rumors are true. I decline to be interviewed any further. Can't a guy just say hello? I'm not interested in an interview. And if I was, know that my paper always stands on the side of justice. As your friend, I can't believe how this panned out. You were so devoted to him, and he tossed you straight to the curb. Uh. Mm. Moving along, I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. Yeah? And with that, I say we buckle down and repair this castle. The funding shall come from my very own pockets. Uh, that's interesting. Do you mean to suggest that we allow humans in the castle? That's just downright blasphemy! I find it more blasphemous to deprive your lord of the castle he deserves! Are you too blind to see the glory of this place? <sighs> and this is why I hate humans. Jeez, delusions of grandeur, don't you think? But there's a second angle. You could also look at this as a great opportunity to help others. Help others? And how would I do that? So here's the truth. Prince Cedric let several of the finest workers in the land go. I propose we hire them to fix the castle. And why would you, the daughter of a duke, go to such lengths for those beneath you? To help. These gentlemen need it. Hmm. I assumed you would be quick to meet my offer with refusal, but I... Do as you wish. Uh, that went better than expected. Keith, in addition to my subsidy, we haven't received your salary in some time now. My lord, it's always been my suspicion that some noble is embezzling our funds. Please look into the issue. 
and recover whatever we're owed. I will use that sum to repair the castle. Just leave it to me. You should know. It so happens that I've already tasked Jasper, an excellent reporter and acquaintance of mine, with investigating the missing funds. Quite bold to take matters into your own hands. Apologies for any encroachment. I merely deemed it the best course of action for us all. <laughs> your distaste for being in the debt of another grows increasingly evident. Let us turn the lens of judgment on you. Why did you take my suggestion with such aggressive haste? Do you enjoy teasing undeserving ladies? Perhaps. Who can say? Well, you're in this mood of hearing me out. I would like to borrow a small plot of land in your forest. There, I will construct a humble croft. Would you now? That's fine. Anything more will depend on how sincerely you ask. Uh, well, there's no point in dawdling around. <laughs> Sir Beelzebeth, I require the grand tour. One moment. Yes? your shadow a demonic gateway. Demons can travel through it as they please. What compelled you to do such a thing? With this, you will be universally accepted by all demons, no matter where your travels take you. <laughs> Seems someone's taken a fancy to my ribbon. Does ribbon sound like a suitable name for you? I've always known that you existed in a league all your own. But still, Eileen, bringing humans to the Demon Lord's castle to do repair work is a lot, even for you. Don't you fret, it's within the realm of the law. I stayed up the entire night making sure of that. <laughs> Prince Cedric's a fool for letting you go. A woman as passionate as you is hard to come by. Flattery? That's rather out of character. <laughs> woman, that's infraction number one. Whoa, who's he? Sir Beelzebub. Hey. Listen close, human. Oh, yes? If you continue to offend our lord in his home, his winds will blow you out and into the next kingdom. Jasper, when did you manage to disgruntle Lord Claude? It's me. I've yet to meet the guy. Then what in the world could that spectacle have been about? <sighs> this bluster certainly isn't convenient for our work. If it turns out all those rumors that the demon lord's emotions affect the weather are true, then that would mean... That would mean what? Nothing yet. Leaking unverified information goes against my journalistic integrity. They're here. You may have a lot of enemies, but there's something to be said about your choice of ally. You should choose quality over quantity, right? Hello, Denis. Luke. Quartz. Even Isaac is willing to lend a hand. There isn't one of us here who hasn't worried over your well-being. Allow me to nip those thoughts in the bud, as there is nothing to worry about. <sighs> Typical. Uh, You're still you. I'm ever so grateful you chose to come to me. Having a genius architect on board brings great comfort. All right! What a thrilling chance to play! I'm so sorry you were let go, Luke. It pains me so to know how close you were to seeing the results of your medicinal research come to fruition. It's fine. The doctor in me is looking forward to perusing the Demon Lord's wealth of flora. You must be overjoyed. <sighs> He's still a touch depressed. Imagine being a botanist and having all the plants you've grown ripped away by someone who doesn't know how to care for them. After all that, you're willing to work for me again? <laughs> if necessary, we can develop an untraceable poison for you to use if you see fit. Right? What do you say, Lord Isaac? I want not a thing to do with your assassination plots on the Prince, you downright quack. The Demon Forest may present us with the perfect ingredients. Pure madness! Better yet, I could build a bridge rig to collapse under a certain princely amount of weight. Build yourself a muggle! Gentlemen, assassination is fun, but let's focus on the task at hand. <laughs> wow! You've surpassed the bounds of my imagination. Who's that? Keith, one of Lord Claude's aides. Who? Don't fear, for I'm an ordinary human. Quite unlike you lot. You are human, but I wouldn't describe you as ordinary. So you've done your research. That falls well within the territory of my occupation here. I'm frequently gathering information for my lord. We would be wise to bring our lollygagging to a close. Lord Claude is growing increasingly upset.
I bring you our guests. What a cultivated look. I have but one rule which requires your adherence. Do not harm the demons you'll find here, or threaten their way of life. Keep in mind I know all that happens within this barrier. Commit the most minor infraction, I will see it, and you will be dealt with accordingly. Question! Precisely what part of this castle is in need of repair? There's much work to be done. I've been using magic to hold the place together. How perplexing. So this is magic. Any preferences on how we fix up your home? I want the castle made comfortable for demons. Then could I talk to the demons directly? Beelzebeth, please interpret for him. Yes, your lordship. Alert me whenever a decision is required. Dismissed. Demons are surprisingly simple. Lord Claude? You seem a smidgen more on edge than usual. And? I was merely curious if something was bothering you. You seem quite close to these men that you've hired. Any business professional where their salt works to build trust with their associates? Hmm. If you're put off by my urgency, know my father will oust me from his house if I can't establish a business before the ball. If that were to happen, I'd be stripped of my privilege to wear even the simplest of gowns. Rather paltry, no? Paltry? Spoken like a man. Don't you know that dresses are womankind's battle armor? Perhaps someone like you has the confidence to run about all natural, but not I! No. I'll keep my clothing on, thanks. And the main reason I invest in attire is so I may confidently stand by your side. No matter the elegance with which your exterior is draped, the fire that is you burns the same. <laughs> Be that as it may, I understand the logic behind your reasoning. I beg you, wait a moment. Tell me, what was instigating your unhappiness earlier? Who knows? I can't say with much certainty myself. Huh? Gone without a trace, eh? Peculiar. You have nothing to worry about, see? Whatever you did caused Lord Claude's mood to improve greatly. <laughs> Let us get to work, gentlemen. Demi, I pronounce you head of all castle repairs. Grand! This way. Come on, kid. For your information, good sir, I'm a 16-year-old man. Jasper, please begin tracing Lord Claude's lost funds. Sir Keith will serve as your partner in this endeavor. It's a pleasure to be working with you, Keith the Human. United, we shall wring those embezzlers dry. <laughs> I'm going to use you three for a special project. Before long, we'll be manufacturing our own line of pharmaceuticals. Perfect. I committed the formula Prince Cedric stole to memory in hopes of an opportunity like this. I'm ready to. I have some ingredients left. Don't be foolish. Now that Prince Cedric has ownership over the business, he'll no doubt throw a complete and utter tantrum if we produce anything remotely in the same vein as him. What's more, he's connected enough to shut us down. We need something new. What we need are cosmetics. We ladies are willing to spend much in the pursuit of beauty. We'll use that knowledge to our favor. I see. That's not a bad idea. Beauty products are far beyond my realm of expertise. You use salves and scrubs on chapped and blistered skin, yes? Just consider this another form of dermal healing. Interesting spin. Let's give it a try. I will test our products personally. The sight of me all done up standing beside Lord Claude will make a great advertisement. Indeed, his beauty is otherworldly. <laughs> I was hoping our cosmetics could raise me to the playing field of your gentleman crush. Now that's a selfish motive. So be it! I will not lose any beauty pageants to my escort! If this is an accurate portrayal of all women kind, we're sure to be rich. What's she doing? Can't say. But she gathered up all the laborers you recently released and brought them to the Demon Lord's castle. I fear there's a scheme at the center of her newfound fondness for my brother. <sighs> yes, it's the perfect scent. 
I couldn't have done it without the steam distiller that Denis crafted for me. <laughs> All that old bucket of bolts. This one's clearly chamomile and lemongrass. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is this one rosemary? Indeed. Using Isaac's documents for a basis, I tried a plethora of different plants. Our final hurdle is finishing those repairs. Denis, how's your progress been? Right on track! Wouldn't you agree this kitchen looks as good as new? Yes, but we can't truly judge the quality of a kitchen just by boiling up grasses and flowers all day. If anyone has the ingredients, we could bake a pastry or two. Hey, human! Make sweets! Yeah, do it! Bake cake! Or pie! Pie's good! No, tarts! Bake tarts! Wanna try? I find this quite a disrespectful usage of my shadow. Return from whence you came right now! Cookies! Brownies! Cakes and pies and... Don't you chant at me! I'll get your convictions when things calm down! Don't bother her. Well, it's assuring to see they're obedient to someone at the very least. I'm delighted to report to you that we got to the bottom of the embezzlement case and have taken care of the issue. Goodness, your friend Jasper is incredibly talented. That's curious, as I received word you obtained most of the evidence on your own. Once you uncovered the culprit's identity, why didn't you let Jasper denounce them in the press? Simple. Some things are best kept private. The public can't know that the Demon Lord was poor. <gasps> You've gone and hurt his feelings! He won't be poor any longer. Money's no concern now, and preparations for the ball are going smoothly. You're able to avoid falling from his favor until then, right? <laughs> right! I'll certainly give it my all. We look forward to the big day, don't we, Lord Claude? Don't we, Lord Claude? <laughs> Not especially. Oh. Why? Because he doesn't believe my appearance will keep up with his grandeur? Was that his insinuation? Uh, you already aren't too far into that. Mm -hmm. Our skin toner will have Lord Claude eating his insinuated words. We must finish it! Work to your highest caliber! Poor man. It's a shame to be foiled by our own naivete. Look. He must not be very angry after all. Our products perform swimmingly in the test, but how should we go about selling them? Please, Almond, I don't have sweets. Dead! You can utilize my shadow as well? That would have been nice to know. Human, I come here with a request. Entering a lady's room uninvited at the dead of night is a nearly unforgivable transgression. But I'll turn a blind eye this time. What is it you require? If our lord is going to be attending this ball, then I wish to attend as well. Aides are welcome, but you'll be asked to stand off toward the side. That's fine with me. I only want to go because the detestable humans who cast out our lord will be there. Though Lord Claude is strong, he's not necessarily invulnerable. <laughs> I have heard that if I don't want to shame him at the ball, I will need to harness the great power known as manners. Think you can help me achieve this? <laughs> I'd be honored to. I'll arm you with all the tricks and trades of high society. <laughs> I'm in your debt! Lord Claude is lucky to have you. From all I've seen, he's very well loved. I find it peculiar so many are wary to get close to him. <laughs> wary to get close to, huh? If I remember correctly, these two don't get along with each other. It's the perfect sales strategy! I don't mean to bother you, human. But I'd like to start my manners training as soon as I can. Of course. For your first lesson... I will teach you the art of kneeling to a lady. <clears throat> Craftsmen, use your full force to complete the framework! Demons, transport materials and keep the workspace tidy, got it? Got it! Everyone is working so diligently. I'll have to reward them with some treats. We have a bowl to make. Are you the catalyst of Beelzebub's strange behavior? I wouldn't call his behavior strange. Just an iota nightlier than it usually is. He asked me to critique the form of his bow over and over again. He'd appreciate the help of a sophisticate like you. So, it seems you've been using sweets to force the demons to do your bidding. I'm not forcing any. On closer look, I see that's true. It's a bit shocking. The land of the demons is far vaster than I imagined. That was originally the property of some count. Keith purchased it so the demons would have more space to roam. You're very lucky to have an aide as clever as he is. Agreed. 
I've grown to trust him deeply. While I'm quite humbled by the compliments, I regret to inform you we bear bad news. There's this nasty rumor. People are saying that Eileen is going after Lady Lilia's life. How could that possibly be? The word on the street is that Lady Lilia has been receiving threatening letters. They say you aren't fit to be Prince Cedric's fiance and refuse the engagement or else. Your standard noble person threats. Folks say you're sending them. Ye gods, what would cause anyone to suppose I'm the culprit? Well, as ridiculous as it sounds, your name was signed at the bottom of some of these letters. On top of that, they're written on the high-quality perfume paper that only noble ladies use. Death threats, huh? I remember this happening in the game. It's a little foggy, but I'm pretty sure the sender was the villainess. Wait, the sender was me? I might have been the miscreant in the game, but in this reality, I've been framed! If you're sure about the stationery... Good Almond, I require your help. On what? What? A very important new job. The reward is a fresh apple pie. Mm, can't do! Or pie, that is! Refuse. Farewell pie! Can't do! I was just going to ask him to rummage through the rubbish at the Imperial Palace. The servants would surely take notice. And if he leaves the barrier, I lose all means to protect him. How do you expect the demons to learn or grow if they never come in contact with the outside world? Go on. But come back if it seems dangerous. Aye, aye, your lordship! If they dare hurt a feather on his little head, I'll destroy them myself! I care as much about Almond's well-being as you do. How strange. I can't go a day without feeling this underlying desire to make you cry. But recently, I found myself nearly overcome by the urge to spoil you rotten. <laughs> Is there anything your lord can do for you? I'll take that as our cue to leave. The best of luck, Lady Eileen. <sighs> Pull yourself together. This is a great opportunity to drop a contract of engagement. But for some reason, it doesn't feel like the right moment. Even though I may never get this chance again. I want... I want you to be the best escort at the whole ball. You must outshine every other man there. Especially that wretched fool, Prince Cedric. You're more formidable than you even know. I'll grant your request. In retrospect, I wonder if I should have asked for some magical substance that promotes glowy skin. Lilia! Are you alright? Oh, yes. I've calmed myself down. I'm certain that Eileen is fraternizing with demons. I'm sure she's the one sending you those horrific letters. Though I agree with you that Lady Eileen is a very coarse woman. We have no real proof she's the sender. You have a pure soul, Lilia. How dare that wench confound it with a sense of unease. My sweet Prince Cedric. <sighs> Eileen. You'll rue the day you threatened my love. decided to come out and play. Oh. Where's Eileen? It's still getting ready, sir. I didn't raise my daughter to be some vain slowpoke. I'm ready, father. Apologies for making you wait. My oh my. What a pleasant surprise. You changed your look. It's lovely. Might this be a bit much? The dress doesn't outshine me now, does it? Not at all, dear. What's the matter? Even at your debutante, you weren't so riddled with anxiety. Well, I... Lord 
Claude wouldn't have just given me this dress out of the blue. He meant for me to wear it to the ball, right? Well, I wager Prince Cedric will fall for you again once he sees your new look. Father, what a cruel joke. A life with him would be worse than death. That's so. I think it's a rather viable possibility. If he comes crawling back, perhaps we could recoup some of our financial losses. Our finances should be the least of your concerns. Hmm. Look at you! You've tried Oberon Skin Toner too, no doubt. Indeed. It's instantly become my favorite, as has the Oberon Company for that matter. The Oberon Company? Peculiar. I've not heard of such a group. It's the most recent endeavor of someone you love dearly. You know, someone who couldn't put the Daltriche name on a cosmetics line. Unfortunately, my sample is nearly run dry. Sample? I haven't received anything from them at all. That makes sense. Rumor has it they're only being delivered to the chosen few. Huh? Does anyone know how to contact the Oberon Company? If you happen to be acquainted with them, I'd like to chat! They think their rivals were deemed worthy of samples while they were not. I would be frantic too. Absolutely. It seems pitting the ladies against each other proved a successful tactic. You've made Oberon the talk of the ball. I've employed the specialists that Prince Cedric so crassly fired. Though we are still finding our footing, I anticipate our profits will hugely surpass any previous losses. It will take a special man to handle all that you are, my dear. I suppose we should go socialize. I look forward to seeing what your new undertaking shall achieve. Father looks so happy. A little too happy, if you ask me. The ladies just can't get enough. Tell the boys we'll need plenty of product to peddle. Luke and Quartz will be thrilled that their handiwork is a hit. Then have we deduced the sender of the threatening letters? You are right. Thanks to Almond, we can prove your hypothesis about the stationary's origin. I brought the evidence tonight. Just signal and I'll pass it your way. I expected no less from you. It's reassuring to have such a dependable colleague. I wish we could end there, but I bear bad news. Lady Lilia has gone missing. <laughs> It's exactly what happens in the Threatening Letters event. Back in the original game, I hire a gang of rogues to kidnap her. Prince Cedric believes you're involved. Naturally, he sent Marcus along with the knights in training into the Demon Lord's forest. <gasps> no! Why? Does he intend to hurt Lord Claude? Don't make a scene. The Demon Lord won't go down so easily. And there's the non-aggression pact. I know. Lord Claude is worried for you, too. He sent me a note via Almond. Until I arrive, take care of Eileen. If you can't handle this, who could? The Demon Lord has put his faith in you. Please lay the groundwork for Lord Claude's arrival. You have business here, don't dawdle about me. Poor shame, friend. If there wasn't another after you, I'd have taken you for myself. I couldn't have you as my husband, darling. I need you too badly as an ally. Sure, whatever you say. If things keep going like they do in the game, I'll be the one who orchestrated the kidnapping. Oh well, I guess it's time to turn some tables. <laughs> the first round, but I'll win the second. If it isn't Eileen Lauren Dodrish, capture her! Even on our day off from repairs, I must patrol. The work of a night is never truly over. Excuse me? So this is her, the one for whom Cedric cast aside Eileen. Good day, sir. My name is Lilia Rainworth. I know who you are, but do you remember me? How could you have possibly managed to breach the barrier without my noticing? I'm afraid I didn't see a barrier. She has a strong resistance to magic. Might she be connected to the Holy Sword, Maiden? No matter. 
Now I must request that you leave. Please, not quite yet. I've been worried. For a while now, I've been beside myself over you. The fate of demon kind rests on your shoulders. I can't even begin to fathom how huge of a responsibility that must be. You're eternally busy keeping them at bay. I just can't help but feel sad for you. It's too much for anyone, alone at least. You pity me. That's rather peculiar. If I pitied someone, I wouldn't invite Imperial soldiers to surround their home. That's a big misunderstanding. Prince Cedric sent those men to find me. All of the threatening letters that I've been receiving have put him on edge. You wrote those letters yourself, did you not? <laughs> it isn't as bad as it sounds. Sending those letters was the only way I could stop Lady Eileen. Stop her? You must believe me. Lady Eileen plans to hire rogues to have me kidnapped. I came here before she could commit the crime. To hide away in the last place she'd expect. Yes. But it's also important to me that you hear and acknowledge that I'm already familiar with her plans. I had to tell you. I hear you've become Lady Eileen's closest confidant. I should have been straightforward and explained everything from the start. I apologize. You speak with alarming confidence. I don't understand why you're so certain Eileen would hurt you. You see, it's just... Lady Eileen remains desperately in love with Prince Cedric. It's only natural she hates me. Besides all of that, something else has been pulling me here. I felt a staggering desire to be near you again! What is this? Every crevice of my skull has gone numb. Human, what have you done to our lord? What's wrong? The power of the holy sword, maiden. She's dangerous. Step away. Please, you shouldn't use such force on a lady. Silence! 
She was my woman to begin with. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I bear an important message for Prince Cedric. It will have to wait. I'm rather busy. But Prince Claude, he's, he's here. <laughs> You shouldn't act so thoughtlessly. Don't provide me with a reason to burn this country to the ground. I made you wait. Apologies, madame. Heavens no. I only arrived a short while ago. You wore the dress. I knew it would look nice on you. <laughs> what? Him? Tell me that it isn't so. Have you signed the nullification? Not yet, I'm afraid. Finalize it as soon as possible. I'd prefer not to escort my younger brother's fiance. Wait, Eileen! You swear it wasn't you? You didn't steal my Lilia away from me? I felt as though I had made that perfectly clear. Uh, who else would have any reason to take her? Stationary, but simply, the harrowing letters that have caused your beloved so much anguish had to have been penned by her own hand. I suppose I should leave this with you. After all, it doesn't have the slightest thing to do with me. <sighs> Prince Cedric, I must bid you adieu. I hope you and sweet Lilia find much happiness.
I might have been Prince Cedric's fiance, but I never really felt like I was his love. Who knows? Maybe I'll miss my comrade in arms someday. But not now. Goodbye, Prince Cedric. Well done. And now that you are no longer bound to another man, Will you grant me the honor of your first dance as your own woman, Lady Eileen Loren d'Autriche? Funny. Hilarious, I say. She chose him over me. I can't believe you betrayed me, you miserable girl. You will not get away with this. <laughs> Thank you for an amazing night. I hear that the lost lady has been found. It's a shame Prince Cedric couldn't announce their engagement at the ball, but at least his soon-to-be bride is safely at home. You played a role in this, yes? Pardon me? It was almost as if Lady Lilia had been magically transported to some unknown forest. <laughs> She's quite a beautiful girl. Hmm? Wouldn't you agree? Crap. Well, that's definitely not what I wanted to say. Right? She's the most popular lady around. They say her smile heals souls. Her skin is just flawless, and her hair is perfectly smooth. What am I doing? I can't stop! But above all, she's known for her honesty. Eileen, I don't see what you're so afraid of. <sighs> Lilia's the heroine. All she has to do is say the phrase from the game to trigger a root, depending on what she chooses. <laughs> it has a greater plasticity than I anticipated. <laughs> That's an odd way to comfort! There's no need to worry about me diverting my gaze. You're pretty and she's not my cup of tea. <sighs> oh, that's nice to hear. So what did the two of you talk about anyway? Nothing memorable. If I recall, she mentioned something about being able to grant my wish. What? How could she do that? Your wish is for humans and demons to live in harmony, yes? <gasps> You looked so happy watching over your demons working together with Denis's crew. I was going to say that my wish is to see you cry, but... I had a great night! Wish denied! I see. How unfortunate. Well, you must be exhausted. You should rest. Indeed. I will, so... <gasps> I said I'd be the perfect escort. And I'm a man of my word. Calm down, Eileen. It's just a farewell kiss. A perfectly common formality. I'll destroy them. It's what their kind deserves. There's not one. Not one means the human worth protecting. I'll tear every last human to shreds! Have a good night and sweet dreams. I hope you have the same. It's all coming back. I remember the reason why he loses faith in humanity. He's going to be betrayed by a human, the only human he's trusted since he was young. Have you forgotten your human? It'd be utterly senseless to come with me. It's my destiny to stand by your side, my lord. It's the one place I belong. So be it.
One peaceful slumber for a traitor. Ah, Lady Eileen! <laughs> Whoa there. What brings you outside of the barrier? As if you don't know. Sir Keith, you are hiding a despicable truth from Lord Claude, yes? Care to come clean, darling? myself rather perturbed by how hush-hush you remained when conducting your embezzlement investigation. Thus, I did a little digging of my own. Much to my dismay, I imagine my secret selling of demons is secret no longer. Oh. Is that the contract of sale for the land? How did you acquire it? I confess I might have asked Father to pull a few strings. My situation is growing dire, you know. I don't. Well, allow me to illustrate. I'm certain you've heard of Lady Lilia by now. <sighs> While it's true her sword maiden powers don't have any tremendous effect on Lord Claude in his human form, if he awakens to his demonic form, she'll be able to conquer him with ease. According to the legend, when the demon lord can no longer stifle his rage and anguish, these feelings will consume him and he'll transform into a dragon. Can you pinpoint anything mankind could do to trigger that reaction? Here's an idea. They prove his aid betrayed him, which leads him to kill the one he trusted most. <laughs> Keith Agret. He's been serving Lord Claude since they were both little kids. If it weren't for Lord Claude, my flame would have been snuffed to ash many years ago. When I was around five years old, I slipped while playing near the pond in the garden. I was sure I would drown. He could have abandoned me. I was a lowly servant after all. But no, he risked using magic in front of the others, and it saved my life. He had exposed his powers as a demon lord and was banished from the castle a few years later. Though humanity at large wanted nothing to do with him, I refused to let him give up on mankind. I thought the day would eventually come when the two forces could live in harmony. I was incredibly naive back in those days. I soon learned mankind is horrid. You would kick him off the land? He bought it from you. I've seen the contract. You must be the one who signed my name. Forgery is a serious crime, boy. This won't be taken lightly. <laughs> Those demons your master hoards are worth a pretty penny. Sell me a few and I'll let this slide. It was wrong, but I have a human mind only capable of foolish human decisions. Perhaps Lord Claude would be happier as a demon than as a member of our loathsome kind. Listen, Keith. Your primary weakness is that you suffer from a lack of human allies. Tis a shame. <laughs> but perhaps you'll find an ally in me. We're coming up on a major plot point. The player character can do serious damage here. Lilia and Cedric play detective and investigate the demon trade. They find out Keith is behind it, and report the whole thing to Lord Claude. They stake out to catch Keith in the act, but find Lord Claude took care of the issue and murdered his closest friend. Overcome with emotion, he turns into a dragon and Lilia defeats him with the Holy Sword. And just like that, it's game over. So first those spoiled sadists break his heart and then his beautiful, beautiful body? Who could have dreamt up such a thing? I despise this scenario to my very core. I wish this were a joke. Uh, but knowing you, it's likely not, so let's devise a plan quickly. Once we solve this small dilemma, the Oberon Company will profit handsomely. Worry yourselves not, for I have a trump card. Do you now? <laughs> yes! It's me, trump card Keith! As of today, I am amongst your underling ranks. Uh, underling? My lord trusts your lady so much he loaned her my services without asking a single question before I left. Hopefully the man won't hurt himself trying to locate the tea leaves. We're still within his barrier, aren't we? The demon lord surely hurt that chap. Now my gifted gaggle of geniuses came to your heart's content. 
humbly share any progress you make. Danger! Danger! The enemies have returned! Enemies, you say? It can't be. Leave this place immediately. Your attempts to scare us away are pointless. We have my Lilia, the Holy Sword Maiden, on our side. Please listen. We believe your aid key is selling demons to turn a prophet. We could have very easily continued our investigation without cluing you in. Lilia felt you should know. Your concern is unwarranted. <gasps> Ask me with first, if that's acceptable. I refuse to leave my mistakes unaddressed. After all, an aide's duty is to bring pride to their lord. Understood. Prepare yourself for our eventual conversation. this whole time. All the demons volunteered to be sold, knowing they were playing a key role in keeping their lord safe. On top of that, Sir Keith did all he could to ensure the buyers would be good to them after purchase. I know that. I know he tried, but... <laughs> I'm not your pet. I think I know what's going on. Keith was shouldering this massive burden on his own, and it's left you questioning your own contributions and utility to Lord Claude. Silence! When will the petting cease? When you begin to feel better. Well, then I feel great. This is exactly how it goes down in the game. Lady Lilia should be hiding in those bushes. Wait, she's not? <laughs> I see you have quite the haul for me today. I heard a funny story, Count Pen. Hmm? It has to do with the land you've long promised us. Apparently you sold it to someone else. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> then you must be getting forgetful, old man. I've seen the contract of sale between you and Duke d'Autriche with my own two eyes. So, I propose you hand over that account book and never contact me again. Counting on you. 
It goes without saying that demons can't outright attack humans. Hence the non-aggression pack's painfully uncreative name. But I can't come up with anything that stops our demons from digging holes and accidentally dispersing irritants on the enemy. <laughs> Tell me what you did to Eileen. 
How dare you lay hands on my... Please don't fret, Lord Claude. I'm all right. Don't look. You can't see me like this. It's... partially... I'm... says it's merely overwork, I see. Eileen has graciously agreed to keep Prince Cedric's despicable actions quiet. In exchange, he has lost his right to the throne, while your right has been reinstated. I'm not interested in any throne. My daughter's been raised to become the Empress since she was a child. She spent years of her life readying herself for the position. Call me a doting father, but I believe my daughter is special beyond compare. Therefore, the only hand I intend to unite with hers is that of the Emperor's. I understand. Then the Emperor is what I shall become. Look! The couple of the hour! Claude Jean Elmir. As of this day, you hold the title of Crown Prince, Eileen Loren d'Autriche. As a prime candidate for future Empress, will you accept this proposal of engagement from the Crown Prince Claude? With the whole of my heart, soul, and mind. <laughs> oh? You're terribly quiet, Second Prince Cedric. I imagine your brother would appreciate your support. <laughs> I leave, my dear. Hmm? <gasps> You've enraptured our guests. All eyes are glued to us. I enjoy seeing. 
seeing how you react to my whims. If you were uncomfortable, you could run away. Uh, run away? Poor word choice for a commitment ceremony. In a world of heroes and knights, it was me who tamed you. And I'll never let you escape! This life is amazing. Who cares if a million more obstacles get in my way? We'll have an incredible time trampling them to the ground together! That's right. For the legendary villainess, Eileen Loren d'Autriche. For Eileen Calwa. Uh, no? Oh, yes, you're correct. That's me. My name's August Zelma. As Vice President of Student Council, I'm here to escort you onto our campus. May I call you Eileen? Mm-hmm. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance, Sir Zelm. You can just call me August. For Eileen Loren d'Autriche, it is not game over. And now, my life disguised. Claude, must I remind you time and time again that I'm a woman, not a fainting couch? Exhaustion bested me. Unlike my demons, humans never run out of demands. The onslaught of their troubles never ceases. Well, perhaps you should retire to your bedchamber to relax a little. That would be marvelous if only I could convince a certain busy bee to join me. Please, I have so much to do. <gasps> Keith. Is there something you require? We have a slight problem in the Mircheta region. A demon named Ashtarti has pronounced himself their representative and sent us a rather troubling and urgent message. A group of demons disobeyed your orders and attacked a human village. <sighs> Mircheta. Given our copious number of enemies, I fear you'll be held responsible for this. It's a vassal state of the Elmir Empire and home of Misha Academy. I know all of this because it's where Regalia of Saints, Demons, and Maidens 2 takes place. I don't remember everything about the second game, but hopefully enough to get by. After they lose the Demon Lord, there are demons who try to destroy the Grand Duchy of Mircheta. If they tank the Duchy in this reality, there's no doubt people will blame Lord Claude. He'll lose his right to the throne as quick as he regained it. And if that happens, I go from future Empress to laughingstock. I've beat one unfortunate end, and I'll beat this one too. By no means are we willing to accept a demon lord who has fallen for the Holy Sword, Maiden. Unless you cooperate and present us with the head of your lover, our terror shall reign, and our next target will be the Grand Duke. Well, we must act. Initiate the emergency procedures for a demon invasion. Yes, Lord. I've dispatched Beelzebub and Almond to the village that was attacked. I'll ask Jasper to use his audience to raise relief funds and gather supplies. There isn't much else we can do for now. I will be acting as the Grand Duke of Mircheta's proxy. What? It will put me in the opportune position to catch Ostrati myself. Between his grief and the stress of the situation, the Grand Duke has fallen quite ill. How are you so sure something like this would be allowed? The groundwork has already been laid, dear. Cedric's approval was key in moving the plan along. Prince Cedric is involved? I can feel a dreadful pit forming in my stomach. I'll just have to go with you. No, you can't. It's your head that those fiends are after. But darling, you're looking at the newest Keeper of the Holy Sword. Demons are by no means a threat nowadays. I am certain that's a fact ostrati has been made aware of. He'll surely employ humans to do his bidding. The region itself is a rough place. They're not known for holding women in the highest regard, even though it's the homeland of the Holy Sword Maiden. There's a popular saying there that even the Saint of Salvation should never forget her duties as a woman. It's rather archaic, like many of the beliefs to which their society clings. It would be best for you to stay in the Imperial capital. Yes, but I'm sure I could help. Something feels off. If my game knowledge doesn't fail me, someone is using the demon incense. It's an underground drug. When used on demons, it causes them to lose all rationality. When used on humans, it gives a huge boost to their physical strength. I can only imagine what would happen if someone used it on Lord Claude. Hmm. <laughs> How dare you put on such a lascivious expression! Lasc 
Sifius. I'm afraid I'm unsure of what you're talking about. Nothing. What matters is that I will be going with you. I've proved myself ridiculously helpful. I refuse to let you come. Given your powers of teleportation, I doubt there's been a moment in your whole life that you felt the anguish of being left behind. So what? So, it's unfair if I'm the only one suffering. I forbid you from using magic to visit me while you're away. Hmm. Let this trial show our love can persist through absence. If you're unable to take this rule seriously, I'll reevaluate our engagement! <laughs> Misha Academy. This place should serve as a good sample to see if goings on here are similar to the game. Or if the script has been flipped. Unfortunately, that's the palace where Lord Claude is acting as the Grand Duke's proxy. That's closer than I hoped. Uh, there better not be any accidental encounters. Eileen's in the capital after all. My father helped me make sure everything was okay with the paperwork. I even fudged my name and gender as an additional precaution. I told you, woman! <laughs> coffee should be served with sugar! I apologize, uh, sir. Hey, what do you think you're... Oh, okay. You're an embarrassment of a fiancé. I knew you were a fool, but you can't even order coffee! <laughs> Get your hands off me! Your behavior me. towards this lady is reproachable. Damn it! <laughs> Who the hell are you? Speak up! Transfer student Eileen Kalwa. Get to your feet, sir. She deserves an immediate apology. Absolutely not! Apologize to a girl! I've heard the male chauvinism runs rampant at this academy, but it's worse than expected. You all should know, I'm surely not a believer in the old teachings on the Holy Sword Maiden. Need help? I advise ending your engagement with that louse as quickly as you can. Your life will be better for it. I must be going. Adieu, fair miss. Impressive skills, my friend. What an imbecile. I specifically instructed her to lay low. This is the student council room. that, we're getting a rare sighting of Kyle and Walt. My newcomer, it must be your lucky day. Kyle was seeking reprieve from his admirers, and I tagged along. Hush. As far as mobs go, I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> August, Walt, and Kyle. In the second game, each one of them is a romanceable character. There are different ways you can play, but in the best ending, August uses Lilia's holy sword to defeat the final boss. We haven't met. You are? Right. I just transferred. Pleased to meet you. My name is Eile Kalwa. Oh. You have a very pretty face, sir, Eile. A face you can observe from way over there. What happened to Haste? You were supposed to bring him here the second he stepped on campus. I rushed him over as fast as I could. Apologies, President James. James Charles. The student council president. And this game's final boss. James is a half-demon, and was a prime candidate to be the next Grand Duke of Mircetta. But his high standing made him a target. A powerful church within the Grand Duchy constantly sends assassins to do the poor guy in. In the midst of this distress, he pronounces himself the Demon Lord's successor and attacks the Grand Duchy. I'm sure I can stop him from becoming the boss. I'll just have to tame James too. For the kingdom and for my darling Lord Claude, of course. So you're the infamous Aili Kalwa. You've been here a fraction of a day and yet you've already caused trouble. Now James, he was just standing up for what he thought was right. Every time you attempt to play the hero, you waste your breath. The only law that exists within this academy is me. Remember that. This is how kids would bully me when I was Cedric's fiance. <laughs> I wanted to check in. Are you doing all right? The 
girl from yesterday. You're, uh... Rachel Donis. I forgot to give you my name. Rachel Donis, you say? Huh? Yes. Have I done something to offend you? Not at all. You just happen to have the same name as another girl I know. I see. What a funny coincidence. Rachel! What are you doing with him? Get over here. I should go. Rachel Donis. She's supposed to be this game's villainess. Her personality isn't what I expected. Not only have you proven yourself a troublemaker, but it appears you've already managed to misplace your textbook. What a joy to teach you're sure to be. What's the answer to the question on page 137? It's three. <laughs> well done, young man. Correct. It was a fool's luck and nothing more. <sighs> Close call. I'm glad my brain held on to that random information. Is that... You want me to deliver this letter to August? Yes, please. Lord August went out of his way to stand up to my boyfriend when he was yelling at me the other day. This felt like the best way to tell him thank you for all he did. Consider it done. And just so you're aware, if you're having serious troubles with your boyfriend, I would be more than happy to help you end things with him. <sighs> he would do that for me? Of course. But you'll have to be strong enough to bring it up to him yourself, even though it could be very difficult. Try to channel the courage of Lady Lilia, the Holy Sword Maiden. Right. I will. Selena Gilbert is the heroine of this game. So it makes sense she adores the heroine of the last game, a.k.a. Lilia. Much like Lilia, Selena was born a commoner, but her father became a baron. Eily. Uh, I heard what happened to your textbook. Are you all right? Absolutely. Schoolyard bullies don't bother me. August! Uh, would you be able to walk home together after class today? I've received yet another delivery for you. I've been a bit overwhelmed with all these requests of late. How about we discuss it in the student council room? That way we can avoid any passerby getting the wrong idea. Weird. He won't walk home with her? Her favorability rating must be too low. Maybe things aren't progressing like they did in the original game. You should be more concerned with what passersby think of your friends. You'd really associate with someone who denounced the Holy Sword Maiden? Oops. I should have mentioned Selena's a big fan of Lady Lilia's. The two of them have even exchanged letters before. I mentioned the Holy Sword Maiden, but Lady Lilia no longer holds that title. Make certain not to say that in front of Selena. And don't bring up Eileen Dotriche unless you want an earful. She despises her and believes she should return Lady Lilia's sword. <laughs> if you're not busy, I actually have a favor I wanted to ask of you. Lord Claude, members of the Guardian Association are here to discuss an issue at Misha Academy. I see. You can send them in. Hmm. Suppose I sent her a letter using magic. Would that be a breach of her rule? I worry that even the slightest use of magic would provoke her. You're right. In that case, ask Almond to deliver it for me. <laughs> oh, and you should know. The prodigal son of the Grand Duke of Mircheta has been investing rather large sums of money in that questionable church. It seems he's trying to have his nephew assassinated. Nephew? So his deceased older sister had an illegitimate child? Indeed. Nearly 20 years ago, she eloped with a demon, in the shadows, of course. Shortly after, a half-demon was born out of this union. Hmm. Now the Duke's son is worried his nephew will be chosen to be the next ruler over him. He also believes his nephew is the demon Ashtarti. These concerns have made the man quite unstable. Hmm. That's good to know. I will keep it in mind. Lots of groaning. Something you wish to report? Well, you see, I'm thinking that I could benefit heavily from joining the student council. <sighs> I implored you not to stand out. We have greater issues than my stardom. I received a letter from Lord Claude, and it's alarming to say the least. You've been discovered? No, it's not that. Before you, my love, I'm reduced to a foolish boy. You have become my entire world. Thus, if my time with you ends, I'll ensure that the world ends with it. I lie awake at night wondering, could a goddess like you be wrapped with the same irrationality? My love burns bright, and yet you forced me to dwell in yearning. All I wish is to plunge into its flames. I await your reply, my love. Hello, John Elmir. How does one begin to reply to a letter filled with such passion? 
this new friend of yours wants a spot on the student council? I believe a transfer student on the team would be a positive change. It's true I'm not entirely familiar with the ways of the Academy. That said, as more of an outsider, I believe I could provide a different perspective on school matters. This Academy functions as a mirror of Mercetta. Thus, the student council mirrors its government. It would be foolish to grant a foreigner a leadership position in a group they don't understand. I think he would make a great addition. It isn't uncommon for governments to scout counsel from outside regions. And I'm not one to say no to another comrade. Before we continue this discussion, let's see if he has any counsel worth scouting. What can I do to prove myself? Investigate. A female student was injured under mysterious circumstances. The most prevalent rumor circulating says it was the work of a vampire. How peculiar. You suspected some sort of demon? The student was found unconscious. She had a wound suggesting her blood had been sucked. The victim herself had no memories of the incident. The Guardian Association heard, and has gone so far as to consult the Grand Duke's proxy. They must be concerned to trouble him. They contacted the Demon Lord. How brazen of them. What's more, there are those suspicious that the Demon Lord is the culprit. I'm willing and fully capable of solving this case. I'll catch them with evidence, not suspicion. I can't let these people think Lord Claude attacked a student. He would never. In that case, I'll leave it to you. If you succeed in finding the culprit, I'll let you join the Council. Just one question. Will you grant me permission to create a security force? For what? If there is a demon involved, we're better off safe than sorry, yes? Your point is justified. But before implementing changes in security, you'll need the director of the Academy to sign this. At the moment, that would be the Grand Duke's proxy. Uh, what now? I shouldn't have to tell you that the director of our school is the Grand Duke. Obviously, his proxy will fill the role while he cannot. I can't say that was an aspect I was aware of. So you would throw yourself headfirst into a vampire investigation, but you're scared of the Demon Lord? <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm. Perhaps I can hire a craftsman to make a replica of Eileen in the form of a pillow. I've observed something of you lately. It appears your weariness and lovesickness increase in parallel. By the way, a student from the Academy is coming by. I believe they said they need a signature from you. <laughs> You're welcome to enter. Side of there, yes. An unimportant duck wouldn't be responsible for important documents. I am certain the symbol of the Academy is a lily. It represents the Holy Sword Mate, not a duck. about your womanly wiles and your masculine form. Oops, you're right, boy time. What's your rationale here? Why make a security force? If anything fishy happens, we'll be the first to know about it. I have a strong feeling this whole vampire ordeal has something to do with Ashtardi. Ash. <gasps> that 
that's Rachel. I remember her. She's the one you protected on your first day. They even sold all my dresses. I'm sorry, but I, I still don't have the money. Wait, I know him. You realize how easy it would be to tell them the truth, that the culprit behind the gruesome vampire attack was none other than little Rachel Donnis. No, you can't! To think Professor Koenig has been the perpetrator this whole time. <clears throat> My goodness, Walt, why are you out so late? Don't tell me that seniors aren't allowed to join the security force. I don't believe we've met. Oh, hello, I'm a childhood friend of Ivy's. The Academy brought us back together. <laughs> Well, we should probably get the names of those two to James as quickly as we can. Since you don't have enough money, I'm afraid you're going to have to pay the rest in a different way. <laughs> when you wake up, you'll appear to be nothing more than another victim of the vampire. In reality, it will be the work of a dia. Now, Isaac, tend to Rachel! Got her! Uh, Sir Eileen? Ugh. You're in for yet another spectacle, I'm sure. How did he get so far away from me so fast? That's strange. Something out here smells weirdly sweet. Salacious secret. Glad we could reach an agreement, comrade. So, how do you plan on bringing that one down? Eyewitness testimony won't be enough, but he'll get his comeuppance eventually. He'll make any excuse to save his hide. I worry we'd be remiss to not look into him further. Hmm. Dig around and see what you can find, like incense. Afraid I must pass. The small fry may lead us to a nice catch. Let us be going. Eily, huh? <laughs> Curious. Might Eileen take a dash of inspiration from your actual name? Odd. I can't recall. If we're comrades, then don't be so cold. I thought you and I were close enough to swap secrets, no? <laughs> I wanted to save my friend from her fiancé. He started to grow very abusive. That's a noble cause. Is this friend also the victim in the vampire case? Well, it's yes or no. Mm. Rachel, take us back to the very beginning, please. Her fiancé's behavior changed after he started smoking this suspicious pipe. I asked Lady Selena about it, but she was clueless. A pipe, huh? Could be demon incense. I wasn't certain what we should do, so when Koenig offered me guidance, I took it. He told me he knew all the way that we could both annul our engagements. It seemed so perfect. I see. That explains why you told your friend to meet with him. I trusted him. I didn't think that he would hurt her. Who would? And he has to meet with you after this? 
Yes, I was so nervous because he was demanding money, but I had to figure out what happened. <sighs> oh, odd. In my opinion, it seems this deviant was targeting you from the get-go. Huh? He spoke to you first, didn't he? If your friend was his primary target, he would have gone straight to her. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. Regardless, we need to ensure the Professor is punished accordingly. Koenig is known for being a gambler. Rumor has it he's already accrued many lifetimes of debt. Speaking of suspicious pipes, he's addicted to one. The solution is simple. We keep the truth of the case to ourselves, and obliterate the cur in the meantime. At moments like this, I am grateful to be on Isaac's good side. The date is done. I picked disturbingly brilliant allies. Go on, tell us how you bested him. I flashed money in his face and asked him to a game of poker. Not only did I obtain information about Rachel, but I robbed the poor fool blind. Really? How odd, I heard he was a great player. Well, I'm an even greater cheater. Then I owe you? That's astronomical! As long as we have this, that old man is reduced to putty in our hands. Did you happen to see his pipe with a demon incense? Yes, but he claims he picked up the pipe off-handedly. He knew little about its contents. To think he teaches us. Uh. As this ordeal comes to an end, it's crucial we frame it as an accident. That way, no one will be suspicious of the victim. And we need to annul Rachel's engagement as well. I'll have to ponder the best way to go about it. Better yet, we could talk it over with her now. If that's all right, Rachel. No. You can handle this. I'll go mop up the professor. Does trusting my friend make you uneasy? Huh? Oh, no, it's not him. I'm sorry the man you put your faith in turned out to be cruel. But he doesn't get to make you right off my sex. Though it's true there are horrible men that seem to feed off hurting you. There are much kinder men that only want to help. I want to be brave. I don't want to be scared anymore. I want to be a woman who sticks up for her sisters, just like Lady Selina. I feel as though I should bring up the annulment myself. I can't live in fear. If I do, nothing will change. Good. I wish you luck. I don't want to waste any more time walking on eggshells for the benefit of others. Eileen? Is there room for a new member on your security force? Of course, we would love to have you. Welcome aboard, Rachel. I look forward to working with you. Us too. What? Is that your way of saying you would like to join the force as well? If I can know your secrets, then I can join your club. <sighs> well, then I have a job for you. I want to use this classroom as the security force's office. So, please get permission from the school president. Is that all? As you wish, my liege. I think the office could benefit from a good cleaning. I'll find some equipment to borrow. So, all things considered, how do you plan to report the vampire case updates to President James? I plan to tell the truth, but I will recommend that we keep things quiet. We don't want to provoke or frighten the student body. What a surprise. You came off as the embodiment of justice herself. You'd be willing to sweep this infraction under the rug? The small fry might lead us to a nice catch, yes. Besides, I'm confident that the real culprit is still out there on the loose. Well, I should get going. Force duties to attend to. <laughs> yes! I knew that was the last one! I might have had to fight for my food, but at least this ambiguously historical world has katsu sandwiches! Would you take a look at this? <laughs> a desperate letter to August. It is pitiful enough to write this. <sighs> I saw you in my dreams. Wait, is that... <laughs> Security force! Step away from the bulletin board, boys! Hmm? Why would we do that? Are we not allowed to read something that's been posted for the public to see? That doesn't seem fair. Three on one, huh? This could be tricky. <sighs> Seems like a paltry hill to die on, gentlemen. Just in time. Only the cowardly would gang up on a lone student. Come on, let's go. Yeah, hurry. Uh, thank you, Kyle. You spared me some serious grief. You're a kind man. 
kind you say? You're sorely mistaken. Would a kind person have done that? Uh, yes, actually. At this point, destroying it was the right thing to do. What? I've stumbled into the first stage of Kyle's romance path. The only difference is that in the game, Selena ends up returning the letter to her friend. After what happened, it'd be cruel to give it back to her. Strange little man. <laughs> you have no business with me, nor any concept of personal space. Oops, I suppose that I'm just eager to see the cats behind the school as well. <coughs> <laughs> you brought them food. I saw it sticking out of your pocket. <gasps> well, this is... There you are. Hi, Leah. Oh. oh, good. I'm glad you're here, Kyle. Why? Has something happened? We've got mail. A statement from Ostrati, to be precise. Uh, what did it say? To the foolish humans who have refused to grant a request of the Holy Sword Maiden's head, our next target will be Misha Academy. Wallow and regret as your festival drowns in a rain of blood. How does the Academy plan to respond? The Grand Duke's condition has yet to improve. In his place, his proxy will begin conducting regular visits to our campus. Wait a second. That means... extravagant celebration at the Academy. It's composed of two major events. The first day is the Swordsmanship Tournament. In the game, the church sponsoring the event very sneakily hides demon incense amongst the prizes. This causes poor James to go full demon mode. If I can stop him from transforming, we'll be able to avoid the destruction of the Grand Duchy. And more importantly, my unfortunate ending. The major event of the second day is the contest to become the ball's White Lily Princess. All in all, it's nothing more than a glorified beauty pageant. And it looks like the mad dash to find a partner to the ball has already begun. What? You dare reject me? You should know your place by now, commoner! But, but I... What's the issue? Please, I think the two of you would look nice together. Why not? You haven't said yes to another suitor, have you? That's not it. I want to ask someone else. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard Auguste say he likely won't attend the ball because he's going to be so busy during the festival. <gasps> what a joke. She was seriously going for Auguste. They're not even close to the same <laughs> You're undateable and ugly. I only asked you to go to the ball because I felt bad. <gasps> Bullying is an unacceptable form of flirtation. Try again. Huh? Who's inside the duck? Speak. It's of no concern to you. I am merely an unimportant duck. I know that voice. Eile Kalwa, yes? Shed the duck and stop acting foolish. I'm on a mission to jump kick every boy who attempts to find a partner in an uncouth manner. My quest is honorable as opposed to, say, posting your friend's private love letter publicly. <laughs> what do you mean, silly duck? Playing dumb. I saw the girl who penned the note handed over to you with my very own eyes. Do you mean to say I committed that heinous act? There's not a soul in school that would believe that absurdity. That's fine with me. I was simply confirming the facts. <laughs> the demon lord! <laughs> As we expected, yes. What a lovely campus. I expected them to fling rocks at you upon arrival, so this is a step up for me. Ah, the hour of your next meeting grows near. We should head that way. Beelzebub is keeping time correctly. They grow up so fast. No, we must first familiarize ourselves with the grounds. We must prepare for Ostrati's inevitable attack. But he won't be able to attack. There's not a demon alive that can lay a hand on you, my lord. <laughs> Beel, you shouldn't rely on dogmatic assumptions. Let's think through this. He's taking the time to give Beel guidance. He's a changed man, and I take credit! While you're here, I have a quick question. Are you familiar with a student that masquerades as a duck? Ah. A duck? Ah. President James! Hmm? You haven't had your lunch break yet, have you? Allow me to take over from here. Are you sure? Yes! Oh, and if you haven't had lunch either, Director, I can show you to the cafeteria. What's this crap? Why is the Holy Sword Maiden's number one 
man getting all touchy with the Demon Lord! That makes no sense! Now, the two of you should head back. I'll trust this young lady to give me a more complete picture of the school. Huh? Well, if you wish. Hold down the fort. Now, Miss... Oh no, you can just call me Selina. All right. I would like a full tour, Selina. Perfect. Leave it to me. Lorda. Uh... Is it okay if I call you Lord Claude? Quite. But please refrain from using that sweet inflection. My dear fiancé gets jealous easily and I know she wouldn't approve. His face is such a deadly weapon. Maybe she can be back to put over his head. In response to Ashtarti's threats, the director tells me that we'll have a brigade of knights at the ready. As far as choosing a mediator goes... Me? I'd be happy to do it. It should be me. It'd be more dangerous for a woman. Please, my new comrade, Lord Claude, would be honored to protect me. I think you've forgotten something. That man's the demon lord, the enemy of your precious holy sword maiden. Be quiet. He's still a human, after all. I mean, true. If you knew about the holy sword maiden, then you would know she'd most certainly try to save him. You understand? That's why I plan to take his side. What a snake. It seems quite unwise to have a woman act as mediator. There's a chance it would upset the young lady of the Dautriche family, yes. Absolutely, yes. You seem to forget that the director has a proper I would gladly take her on. That would be foolish. She's rumored to be a very aggressive woman. Who knows what she's capable of? I heard she has a harsh personality. She might even storm the academy. <laughs> well, the demon lord didn't bring her along. Most likely to avoid the additional chaos. Poor gentleman. You'll have to regret this. Have you seen it? That portrait of hers that's been making the rounds recently? What portrait? Here, take a look. She seems unique. I'm impressed the Demon Lord has such interesting taste in women. But interesting doesn't mean good. It only makes sense a demon would find the most comfort with a beastly bride. I don't know who disseminated this image, but they have a death wish! I doubt he had any choice. I'm sure the Dautriche family forced the engagement on him. Hence my plan. I'm going to ask him to be my date to the festival. Imagine me as the White Lily Princess, Lord Claude, at my side. On that note, I should go. These grounds won't patrol themselves. I suppose I'll join you tonight. I will too. Might as well. Uh, Wait for me, guys. Uh -huh. Why do you insist on infringing upon my solitude? The conversation devolved, don't you think? I needed to escape that. Well, now we can decide who'll be the mediator. Unfortunately, we have no choice. The Demon Lord took it upon himself to request Selina. That's a surprise. Lord Claude requested her? What's going on? Is he cheating on me? Come to think of it, have we ever walked around together like this? No, I don't think we have. What's the fun in meandering with men? It's such a drag. You would surely operate better as a student council if you took the time to develop some camaraderie. Eileen is always full of such great ideas. Starting now, we'll be friends, I say. Right, men? Absolutely not. Let's all just focus into our jobs. I don't want any of you lot bringing me down. <clears throat> Apologies. Forgot how cold you are. I guess it makes sense that these guys can't get along without some serious effort. First, we have the demon hunters, Walt and Kyle. And then there's James, their target. And lastly, there's August, who eventually deals the final blow. If things progress like they do in the game, these four are destined to try to kill each other. No matter what, they can't find out James's true identity. Are you picking up that sickly sweet smell? <laughs> James, what's wrong? Hush, I'm all right. Don't worry about me. This is bad. Quick, come, now! Please take President James to the dorms to rest. Uh, okay. James, I'm here to help. It's fine. I can make it on my own. Don't move. James, yours white as a sheet. Listen, Eileen. Now, I need you to go notify the professors of what happened. Me? But I... Oh, there's no need, Kyle. He's safe. What? Eileen here is familiar with our identities, so... You might as well think of him as an ally. An ally? That scrawny looking thing? He's not scrawny, he's... <laughs> no. We must locate the incense as soon as we can. We don't want it attracting demons, do we? Look here! This has 
has to be it. It's empty, and there's not much of a scent remaining. There's no chance this could attract a demon. Odd. Why would someone leave this here? Might the church be scattering incense throughout the academy? Well, I doubt they would litter them around just to have us pick them up. Seems quite useless. I'm not convinced. I've heard rumors that the church is taking it upon themselves to lure out the demon in the academy by mixing incense in with the prizes for the swordsmanship tournament. Don't say that! The church wouldn't partake in such dastardly deeds. We both know how those priests could be convinced. With a few fistfuls of cash, of course. Walt, stop it! By the way, our client for this mission is none other than the Mircetta family. I hope our skills will be used for more than dawdling in family affairs. Be quiet. You've already revealed more than enough secret information to Wiley. Please, he already knows all that, don't you? Yes, I know the gist of it. From the game. What is demon incense? <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, well, it turns out James is feeling better. <sighs> Seriously? You're all agents? And you were sent here on a secret mission from the Elmir Empire? That's amazing! Yes, that's correct. And even though Walt and Kyle may look more formidable, they're still just lowly apprentices. <laughs> but that would mean you're in charge of us somehow. Am I not? No, you are. Of course, boss. More underlings for the collection. On a more important note, does demon incense make people grow violent? Yes. I see. That would explain why the abuse of women has increased at the Academy. Uh-huh. I figured that was the norm here, but I think you might be onto something. We can't let this horrid substance poison our school any further. I'll gladly help to put a stop to it. Great. Thank you. Well, James, are you going to offer to help too? Why would I do that? It's apparent there's much more they're hiding from us. <laughs> You say that this demon incense is very dangerous and causes mankind to act violently. Is that all it does? Uh, I'll be reporting this to the director of the academy. Uh, James, this secrecy is merely a part of their job. I'm sure there are many things they can't tell us about. I think we should trust them. I do envy your naivete. However, oh. there's not a single soul that I trust. <laughs> No, I can get him on our side. <laughs> James, please wait a moment. We need to talk, right now. I agree. There's something I've been meaning to ask for a long time. Who are you, Ailey Kalwa? Don't be silly, I just came clean about that, did I not? Let me ask a different question. <laughs> Are you Ailey Kalwa? Uh, that's odd. I came clean about that, didn't I? I'll ask a different question. That night, you bore witness to my true form, correct? <laughs> Answer the question if you want to live. You choose silence. Why would I align myself with a complete unknown? If death is your wish, then stay quiet. All right, allow me to explain. Come out, Ribbon. Get this creature off of me! Make haste! I want to protect you, James. Really? Why's that? As evidenced by my friend here, I can summon demons. At the bare minimum, this should be more than enough to prove I'm not aligned with the church that's currently hunting you down. See, I came here looking for a demon named Ashtardi. I imagine you've heard of him, haven't you? Well, of course I've heard of him. I am him. Huh? I was born a half-demon. No one at the Academy knows. Not even the other student council members. My father is the one who gave me the demon name Ashtardi. But I abandoned it long ago. I'm pretty sure I don't remember that lore being in the game. I see. They're using your name, but you're not committing the attacks. Why would they do such a thing? Who can say? Most likely so that the true villain can easily frame me as the culprit. If you don't mind, would you send your demon away? It would be a catastrophe if someone saw it here with us. And you need to be more careful when running up to strangers, little one. I'm not as much like you as my odor might suggest. You 
remind me of someone. Someone I care for deeply. Uh, thank you? The point is, I will do my best to protect you, but I'll need your help. And you can start by not reporting me to the director. I can't do that. Too bad. In that case, come back now. Enough, I concede. You shouldn't use your friend as a shield. How cowardly. <laughs> and what about the demons in the city? They've been instructed to evacuate the area. Excellent. Keep an eye out for those more easily corruptible. We can't let Ashtati get to them. Beelzebuth and I are going to start patrolling the surrounding areas tomorrow. I believe it's for the best if you remain right where you are, my lord. Yes, I agree. The sheer vastness of this land is most inconvenient. It's so lonely. You must stay here. The students will want to see you at this festival we've heard so much about. I know. I'm hoping I can make some friends there. Uh, in my entire life, I've never made a friend, and I would very much like to try it. I'll do whatever I can to aid in your quest, my lord. A splendid idea. Let's discuss the ways you could introduce yourself. Hello there, I'm Lord Claw, Director, Demon Lord, and Ruler of you all. Power might be imbalanced. You see intense pressure of your position weighing on you. It's not that complex. I would simply like to have a few friends. Can't you see how badly our Lord craves companions? You should go and prepare some immediately. I'm afraid friends aren't something you can prepare for someone else. That's right. Luckily, I know an expert in such matters. I'll have to ask my darling Eileen for her advice. With a woman like her by my side, I can embrace the aspects of my humanity that I kept hidden for far too long. Hear me, please! It's an esteemed school, not a social club! You have your position to think about, my lord, so please save making friends for another time! But why? Because it isn't right that while we two are hard at work, our leader is busy at the playground making little friends. Security force! That pipe violates school regulations. Don't be a stick in the mud, it's a festival! Hand it over now. <laughs> Fine. It's not demon incense. Let's confiscate it and be on our way, Chi- I mean, Blue. I've never felt so foolish in my life. Lord Claude seemed fixated on the duck costume. Where better to hide than in plain sight? Red! Blue! Agu- I mean, Pink! It's no time to amble about. There's an entry deadline. Oof. It's already time? I've gotta fly! There's more external entries than I anticipated. Do you think August can best them? He'll do well. He has more muscle than mind. Thank goodness. It appears they're still accepting entries. The Demon Lord? What? Lord Claude? Well, you've got yourself a whole flock. I'm signed up and ready. Huh? The Director? You're mistaken. Oh, my apologies, Demon Lord. Though we look the same, I am not he, for I am no one. A lowly traveler passing through with the wind. Ah, so you're working undercover as an ordinary person, I get it. Correct. That sounds like an idea Keith would get behind. Therefore, I'll go with it. Dressed like that? He's totally here for play and not work. This swordsmanship tournament has piqued my interest. Do either of you know how I might enter? Yes. I can show you how to sign up. I can also show you where to find the best food stalls. Enter first and then eat. You're running low on time. Could you not have figured that out yourself, love? Or is forcing teenage boys to play mommy a must? <gasps> He's staring! He's absolutely staring! It's you. That peculiar little duck who came to get my signature. Since our first encounter, my curiosity about you has been running rampant. You know, this would be incredibly sexy if I wasn't a freaking duck! Why dost thou run, duck? <laughs> Lowly traveler, you better get your entry in soon. Right, of course. Fun with humans. 
I just wish I could have explored the festival with him. Rit, problem. <laughs> we just received instruction from the church to hunt down the Academy's demon, no matter the cost. They've already spread incense about the tournament grounds, hoping to force the beast out of hiding. <laughs> it's concealed in the lanterns at the four corners of the arena. Once they're lit, the incense will spread, breaching the lungs of everyone in the room. Trouble is, if we remove them, we'll be labeled traitors, and in a matter of moments, the Church's assassins will be on our tails to get rid of us. We just heard the Director is entering the Swordsmanship Tournament. If he's exposed to a high volume of incense, he could transform into a dragon. <laughs> it won't just be the Academy at risk. The entire country will be in danger. We must think. How can we convince Lord Claude to withdraw from the tournament? The fact that he made it through the preliminaries without any magic and only using his left hand is a miracle. I seriously doubt he'll progress much further with such a massive handicap. False! It'd be impossible for my brave Lord Claude to lose. I need you to think harder! Oh, spare me the love. Well, I suppose there's a more involved method. Go on. Luke has been developing a sleeping potion. It's potent enough to work on the demon lord, human or dragon. While the tournament rages on, my love could sleep peacefully. Here, try. This is the most refreshing of waters drawn straight from our local well. I look forward to it. Oh, and best of luck in the finals. Thank you. I should rest for a moment or two. <laughs> if he can just stay asleep, we can prevent him from going dragon mode and James from becoming the final boss. The Grand Duchy will be saved, and Eileen Dotrish will evade yet another unfortunate end. You in there, Lord Claude? <gasps> Lord Claude, they're ready for you. Hush, Selina. I'm not Lord Claude, but an ordinary man. For now, you can call me Sir Black. The peak of creativity. More importantly, why isn't the potion working? So, Sir Black, did you ever have a chance to try those cookies I made especially for you? I did. Oh, great. So tell me, how are you feeling? Huh? The she-devil. I bet she used a love potion! That must be what's throwing off Luke's sleeping drug! I feel quite alright. Oh, well, that's good to hear. <laughs> Sorry, Lord Claude. Looks like I have no other choice. Get 
to fight the flock, what fun. <laughs> The church's men are lighting the lanterns. You would dare drop your guard? What game are you playing? What do you stand to gain by insulting my Eileen? Huh? What's going on here? August, help us! Sure, just tell me what I need to do. I'll do it. I don't know. Say the Demon Lord's fiance is a hideous beast or something. But you shouldn't say things like that even if they're true! <laughs> <laughs> show them the full strength of the security force. Apologies for dragging you into it, Director. So you insulted my precious fiancé for nothing more than a cheap spectacle? <laughs> Red Duck was the cruelest. Such foul behavior cannot slide. I will not stop until it's in pieces. And a note for the rest of you. Apologies behind a mask aren't sincere. Yes, sir. You're absolutely right. <clears throat> as we could, literally. Indeed. What's more, we were able to complete your orders first, my lord. I'm sure you were the cause of this mess. Did you try to make friends? I knew that would backfire. I might have contributed, but I'm far from the cause of this mayhem. Playing accomplice to chaos is no prize. You shouldn't be mad. I happened upon a surprise for you. The men littered about the floor are agents of the church. What? They planted something in the lanterns. Collect them and find out what's inside. He noticed the demon incense? When? I thoroughly apologize for any trouble our lord might have caused. I will see to it that he maintains a safe distance from the remainder of your festival activities. Wait, what about the final match? You won, young man. More accurately, you won against my left hand, but good work. You're the winner nonetheless. Wait, really? I am? I'd like to challenge you again someday. Next time as your friend. <laughs> I'd love nothing more. Mm. It's magic! Oh, this is the first. <laughs> I'll leave the rest to you, and the next time our paths cross, I'll find out who you truly are, Duck. received the information from an anonymous letter to his newspaper. Wow, Eileen. Your secret organization even has connections to the press? You're the real deal. After being foiled at the tournament, they would dare try the ball? We'll have to confirm the prize to know for certain. It's being heavily guarded. The Guardian Association has a tight watch on everything to do with the ball. Frankly, I'm at a bit of a loss here. Um... I could take the lead on this investigation. I can try to become the White Lily Princess. That way we can get the prize. Brilliant! Sure you can handle that? We can't have you fainting from stage right and losing this for us. Yes, I can do it. 
Word is that Rachel has the best chance to beat Selena. I say she's got this. Sounds like a plausible plan to me. I don't have any objections to it. Yes, neither do I. Well, fine. Our plan it shall be. Great! I guess I should go and prepare my dress now. <gasps> That's right! I sold my dress! I completely forgot! Not an issue. We still have time before the ball. Why don't you go pick out a gown with Isaac? Why me? I'm far from a stylist. I trust you. All right, fine then. Let's go. <gasps> well, run along. <gasps> hey! I'm coming! Wait for me! I can't believe they're going to give the princess demon incense. That's certainly not how it was in the game. Wow. Sorry for the wait. It's tough to put on. Isaac thought that it would be best to go with something a little showier than my usual style. Agreed. You look incredible, Rachel. I've got this. It's hard to tell. But I'll have you know that my etiquette and social skills are actually top notch. It's the perfect chance to prove myself to Sir Isaac. If you do end up White Lily Princess, do you think you'll ask Isaac to be your dance partner? Uh. <laughs> I'm quite curious why he would be your choice. When I suggested breaking off the engagement, my parents were against it, my fiancé was irate, and it seemed no one was on my side. The way everybody was talking about it made me question my decision entirely. But then Isaac said something to me that let me know I was doing the right thing. Exquisitely done. <sighs> Those couple of words alone filled me with a newfound pride in myself. That's why I'm going to go out there and try my best today. And why I won't lose to Selena. That's exactly how I felt when I went to Cedric's ball. Aw, would you look at that? You decided to enter the competition after all? That's right. Guess I had a change of heart. Lovely. Let's both try our best then, yes? Your dress is stunning. I love the material. Let me get a closer look. <laughs> Rachel! I think I'm okay. Oh no, my poor dress is ruined! Is he serious? Few have courage like our Eileen. Even fewer have such dainty features. Oh. He's so pretty.
from becoming princesses, demon incense? How dare she endanger one of my precious underlings and over some stupid pageant? New idea. Would you mind lending me your dress for a little while, Rachel? to approach when she was left alone at a ball. I so desperately wanted to speak to her, but didn't make a move when it mattered most. Pathetic, right? No, not so in the slightest. Exquisitely done. my spirits.
That hails from the east. Incense burner. I'll open it. There's nothing inside. So the anonymous letter sent to the Imperial capital was a lie? Indeed. This was nothing but a sham from the start. Everyone! The main stage! <laughs> if I could please have your attention, it would seem Ashtarty is hiding in our midst. Ashtarty? What's that in her hand? Demon incense! It's my duty to expose Ashtarty. I'm determined to bring him to justice. I'll root you out from wherever you're hiding. Run! Explosion! Don't bring it in! Go now! President, run! We mustn't kill the demons, 
holy sword. Understand? Protect the human, sure, but exercise restraint. Yes, this is the will of the demon lord's betrothed. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> Explain why you aren't in the capital. <laughs> Thanks to Lord Claude's intervention, the demon incense problem was handled. But Lord Claude didn't chase me when I ran. A serious red flag. I've angered him. Undoubtedly. So the person running around the academy in a duck costume was... Yes, the Demon Lord's fiancé. Who is also the Holy Sword Maiden. Hard to believe she was with us this entire time. I think perhaps I offended her ladyship with my rudeness. It doesn't make much of a difference to me if you're a man or a woman, Eileen. But I have to ask you, why did you bring the duck head? In a last and likely futile effort to dress up as a duck and appease Lord Claude's anger, Rachel. Huh? Uh, good luck cooling that icy hurt. No, I've got zero chance! Impeccable timing, dear. It was getting rather lonely staring at emptiness. Emptiness, huh? You mean the empty cage? Not just any cage. This prison was wonderfully made for you, Lady Eileen. Take a peek. It's even nicer looking on the inside. Me? Prison? <laughs> Lord Claude, I'm your fiancé, not a criminal. You're my love, and because of that I spoil you. But your latest caper has shaken me and filled me with regret. To think you would be so deceptive and infiltrate the Academy as a boy. Of course, this solves why that duck piqued my curiosity. <sighs> the time has come. At last, I'll witness your crying face, beloved. I cannot believe you! My actions were right and justified, as the Demon Lord's betrothed! <laughs> You knew about the demon incense, didn't you? So tell me, what would have happened to you had you succumbed to its effects? Is that what you want? For me to suffer a repeat of Prince Cedric? Sit pretty in the capital and stay silent, doing nothing? Demon Lord, sir. It's just... She was only worried, so I didn't say anything. Please don't be mad at Eileen. Okay, that's all. Bye. You knowingly chose a wife who wouldn't take orders from a husband. Consider keeping a tight leash on her next time, as her fiancé. Yes, understood. I suppose you're right. <laughs> We're far from finished here, so try not to look too relieved, my dear Eileen. Now... It seems you've picked up yet another pet. Show some respect. He's our future representative. James here will be most helpful to our cause, I think. Uh, playing politics? Oh, so that's what you meant when you said you had a place for me. Oh. Hey, now, don't get so bent out of shape. On the bright side, at least you have a job lined up after the Academy. Quit joking around! There is nothing bright about this. And as for you, I would like to offer you a position as my knight, if you're willing. Huh? Someone of your caliber would fit perfectly. Speaking of, Rachel, uh, how would you like to become my maiden-waiting? Me? Are you sure about that? Mm, quite. I've been searching for a maid who would fight alongside me. And you two. Uh, I should mention we're gainfully employed already. Then I'll negotiate with your employers at the church. 
I do have plenty of dirt on them after that malicious stunt they pulled during the tournament. I've no doubt they'll sell the two of you to me in a heartbeat. Did I hear that correctly? Sold off like cattle to the Demon King. And Selena. She slipped away after the Demon incident. Rest assured, she didn't get too far. How did you capture her so quickly? It wasn't very difficult, you see. The scent of demon incense was on her the whole time. I had to remain on my guard, lest I fall victim to her trickery. She never seemed to catch on that I knew. <sighs> Selena had demon incense on her without realizing what it was. Nonsense. I don't even know what that is. She also knew August should have possessed the Holy Sword, like in the game. You don't? But I thought that you were the rightful wielder of it. Or so I was informed. So, was Selena following the instructions of someone who has knowledge of the game? This is wrong! This wasn't what was supposed to happen! I followed the instructions in the letter! Letters? The person penning the letters to Selena? Who is it? Oops, I should have mentioned Selena's a big fan of Lady Lilia's. The two of them have even exchanged letters before. <gasps> That's it. I know who the mastermind is. The one pretending to be Ashtarti. Not dawdle. Right. 
I'm reminded, dearest, that I haven't had time to properly punish you for your earlier disobedience. <gasps> what? Punish me how? Oh, perhaps a kiss would satisfy my longing to see you chastised. <gasps> here? Must we have this intimate conversation here and now, Lord Claude? Hmm. your husband to be. Your beautiful blue eyes need only focus on me, dearest Eileen. This man is so unfair. Let us be off then. We mustn't keep the Emperor waiting. We'll keep moving forward to the happy ending that awaits us together. twist and turn. We will find our way. Cedric, how do you do? It's quite unusual to see you here, brother. I'm here because the Dowager Empress summoned me. A summons from Grandmother. Well, you have my sympathies. As do you. That is to say, my apologies for making you worry. Me worry? Has it truly slipped your mind that we're both competing for the throne? Neither you nor I buy to occupy the throne. It certainly seems like we do. I will be Emperor. All that to impress Lilia. Yes. Aren't you aiming for the throne? To fulfill Eileen's desires as her fiancé? <sighs> Allow me to impart a note of caution. Be wary of bowing to a woman's beck and call. Sheep get boring fast. Before you go, Lilia is planning something. Do try to be careful. I'll say nothing more than that. <laughs> Supposedly, demon incense is sold as well. Is that right? Oh. Yes, not only demon incense, but demons also. Should the situation go south, you have my approval to make arrests, August. But has Lord Claude given you his approval? Pardon? Keeping secrets from him will only do more harm. Aren't you already in enough trouble as it is? Lord Claude is very kind. I haven't the faintest clue why you lot would believe otherwise. <sighs> anyway, our first priority is gathering information, split up into two groups. <laughs> This sort of thing isn't really my expertise. Oh, one night is enough for you to gain some experience. With a woman like me to guide you. That's what I was afraid of. Oh, our demon is loose! It's James's signal. Hurry. You keep watch. I'll search the room. Be on your guard, August. <laughs> It's an honor, Lady Eileen Lauren d'Autriche. Who are you? Are you a sorcerer? That I am. I know my actions were brazen. I merely request an audience with the Demon Lord. Apologies for the fright. Embrace! And burn the gun! You can use this. Come. Not until we have the evidence that we need to expose this place. Evidence, you say? Will the guest list do? You're quite skilled. If you hand it over, you will have your audience with Lord Claude. Happily. They're in here! Uh, quickly now, my lady. I do hope you have a plan of escape. I'll manipulate the wind. Please jump. 
magical arts, if I do recall. I am currently a mere servant of the Elmir Empire. The Imperial Crown Prince must know of our present place in society. I certainly know this family. They're one of only a few human clans that can control magic, according to the game. And because the Elmir Empire believes that none but demons can channel magic, sorcerers have always been rejected by human society. Twenty years ago, the Levy family declared war against the Empire, hoping to expand their territory, but lost. Sorcerers have since been forced to provide protection to the Imperial family behind the scenes, while their children and elders are held hostage. If I were to take over the throne, you want me to formally recognize the people of the Levy family as citizens of the Elmir Empire. Do I have that right? Please help free my family from their bondage, my lord. Let your actions henceforth decide your fate. <sighs> More underlings to add to your collection? What if this turns out to be a trick? If we're aiding the sorcerer's revenge, I say we decline. Deny their vengeance? I see no reason to if the sorcerer's bite matches their bark towards the Empire. Uh, Isaac? Huh? What we desire is an Empire where humans and demons live in harmony. Wouldn't it be in our best interest to help the oppressed in any way we can? I don't think it's a good idea. Oh, I'll be sure to teach him the greatness of Lord Claude. As long as you have no objections. Not at all. I look forward to learning from you. I warned you about keeping a secure leash on her. Didn't I tell you last time, my lord? You did. That will be all, gentlemen. You're dismissed. Good night. I love you. That man! Teleporting me off to bed right in the middle of a tense discussion! What a relief. Looks like the final boss is on our side this time. I have a clearer memory of the first game than I do of the fan disc. Too bad I didn't replay the side content more often. Which reminds me... Lord Claude was demonized in the first game, but in the fan disc, he appeared again as one of the romanceable options as a character extra. And when that happened... <gasps> Almond, are you there? Are you in there, Beelzebub? Oh no, this is bad. Uh... Lady Eileen? Did 
you this call for someone? Um, uh, Rachel, please look after things while I'm away. I won't be long. You're going out again? But it's terribly late, my lady. Eileen, uh, 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 it's the demon lord. Something's amiss. He's nowhere to be found. And what's even worse, the barrier for the forest is gone also. Eileen, I have news. Your grace. I've received word of a distressing account from an aide stationed in the Imperial Castle. They report to have seen Lord Claude being stabbed in the abdomen. <gasps> Not the demon, Lord! Stabbed? No, that doesn't make sense. He said he loved me only hours ago. Do not be alarmed. The wound is quite shallow. There is no threat to his life at present. But sadly, this injury caused Lord Claude his memories. Love is precious. It can disappear at any moment. It's happened once. It can surely happen again. What is the meaning of this? Please explain why you were keeping me from seeing Lord Claude. Why, why should you? My son's now bereft of his memory and demonic power, and no longer a demon lord. Thus, I will separate him from demons and have him start over as a human. This is the perfect chance for him to become the next emperor. <sighs> I beg your pardon, your imperial majesty, but what about your son's arranged marriage with my daughter? Do be at ease. I don't plan to cancel it now. I will seek a suitable time and reason for the annulment. Without our consent? This is not fair! There's hope yet for Claude, despite this setback of his. He has the option to reconsider his future now. I am certain there will be plenty of candidates who hope to wed him as a human. <laughs> Eileen, yes? What a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. I pray you are well, Dowager Empress, and the pleasure is all mine. <laughs> well, aren't you a polite and endearing young lady? I feel a bit jealous. If the accounts are true... This woman's over 60 years old. As it just so happens, I plan to host an extravagant ball, and it would be the perfect opportunity for my dear grandson to choose a future wife who is suitable for his new lifestyle. I never cease to be impressed by your astute political machinations, Madam Dowager Empress. However, I don't believe my family received an invitation to this ball. My, there must have been an oversight. Wouldn't it cause more trouble for your family to receive an invitation at this late date? But I am still Lord Claude's fiancé, Your Majesty! If it's Claude's health you're so concerned over, then you have no need to worry your pretty little head, my dear. Cedric and Lilia are taking care of him quite well without you. Allow me to confirm Lord Claude's health for myself, please, just once. I beg of you, at least allow me this much as his fiancé. How unseemly. If you do love him, as you say, shouldn't you let him go? Pardon me for interrupting. <gasps> Lilia was insistent. Oh, Grandmother, this is far too cruel. You mustn't force Lady Eileen to break up with him. Lilia, what is this woman plotting? It would be rather suspicious to annul the engagement after he lost his memory. The two of them have developed quite the reputation for being in a close relationship. They're a couple, so we should at least invite her to the ball, right, Grandmother? Huh. The two of you have a point. I suppose I can send an invitation to her. However, should you try otherwise to meet with Lord Claude, I'll have you beheaded for going against an Imperial decree. <laughs> Good luck. I very much look forward to seeing what you can accomplish at the ball. Lady Eileen is the main character. Have a little bit of faith in her, Grandmother. She won't lose in a scenario this easy, will you? Lady Eileen, <laughs> what do you say you and I have a little more fun? So she wants to play. <laughs> of course, Lady Lilia. But know this. It will be the last time. Yes, that's the spirit, Lady Eileen. I would expect no less from you. <laughs> if this truly is reality, isn't it quite cruel? Poor Lady Eileen. Huh? Lilia, are you sure about this? 
Yes. Huh? Are you worried about something? Yes. The culprit who attacked my brother is still out there. And what's more... Oh, is he worried his more capable brother will take me from him? What an exhausting small-minded man. Your kindness is what I love most about you, Prince Cedric. Be wary of bowing to a woman's beck and call. Sheep get boring fast. Eileen. I beg you. Please take care of my lord. I will. <laughs> and don't you forget, I am the demon lord's future wife. He's in there. Almond's a good bird. Wouldn't have found it without him. It seems there's a holy barrier to ward off outsiders. Child's play, I say. My sword can surely break through that barrier with ease. I see they still underestimate me. Most people wouldn't think about jumping off a cliff. Not at this height. It's time. Prepare your wind magic. While I tear down the holy barrier with my sword. And may I remind you, you'll be executed if caught. I'm well aware of that. As long as you are. Your hand. choice to make here. I know what I must do now. Lord Claude, you'd make me the happiest woman if you married me! What are you talking about? All you have to do is say yes, and I can promise you a comfortable, cushy life full of laughter, love, and happiness! No need to be modest with me, just take the plunge! I'm not so desperate that I'd marry the first person to propose to me without introduction, lost memory or no. Oh, how rude of me! Hello, my name is Eileen Lorraine Dautriche, and I happen to be your fiancé, my Lord Claude. Are you the Eileen that they warned me about? I have no desire to marry someone like you, so please just leave me. Just leave? That's being a tad cold, Lord Claude. I will not become the Demon Lord again. I burdened my country and my people by selfishly accepting the title. Lilia and the others went through much to save me. I won't allow that to be in vain. Do you truly mean that? Therefore, please accept the annulment of our engagement. I will pretend I did not hear that. I'll 
have you know, I would have cut you down right here and now if I wasn't desperately in love with you. You're truly in love with me? Of course. I wouldn't have risked execution to see you if I wasn't. They threatened to execute you. As an outlaw, I'll be beheaded if they discovered I met with you. But that's a risk I'm more than willing to take. And if that's the price of treason, I'm happy to pay it. But the guards could come in at any moment. You've done enough, so please, please just leave. Uh, you're still the caring man I fell in love with. Uh, thank goodness you're all right. As long as you're alive, I can win you over as many times as it takes. Uh, how brazen of you! Don't you know putting your hands on a man is very unbecoming of a young unmarried woman? What a gentleman! Who knew hidden underneath your demon lord's side was such a dashing and chivalrous soul? I can't help it! I want to uh, steal you away right now! Pardon? For the last time, I'm asking you to unhand me right now! This how can you say that say. when I'm having so much fun? Excuse me. Uh, the patrolling guards will pass by shortly. Those guards have the worst timing, don't they, Lord Claude? Until next time. With any luck, there will not be a next time. Oh, and please excuse me. <laughs> my hair! A souvenir. I'll treasure it. Oh, and before I take my leave, you must promise this. Do not ever cheat on me. Come again? Isn't the purpose of the ball to find you a new fiancé, one to replace me? I'm not interested. My plate is full. I'm busy dealing with the requirements of becoming a crown prince. I've no time for that. But what are you doing? Oh, I'm just tucking you in and thinking how you sound like the man I love. No matter what, I'll have you falling for me again and again. I promise you. No matter what, she's an odd one. Fiance, she couldn't possibly be. If I'm destined to fall for her again, is our love fated to be? Here, a lock of Lord Claude's hair. Treasure it well. Lord Claude! What joy to see even hold a small piece of you! I'm not concerned. This version of Lord Claude is, let's just say, with a good scheme, it'll be smooth sailing. Goodness, you should really use a gently touch when dealing with the Demon Lord. I'll do whatever it takes to save our engagement. And trust me, I'll be very gentle and loving once he can't escape. But first, I must have him under my thumb. If I were in that poor man's shoes, it'd feel more akin to falling off a cliff than in love. That's right! And yours truly will give him a heart- an inspection of the kingdom? Yeah. How peculiar. Has the news not been released that the Demon Lord has lost both his memories and his powers? It has. That's why he's doing all this. An inspection puts him back out there. Cedric and Lily are taking a look to boost public opinion. Interesting selection. Sure. But it makes sense because I hear it was Lady Lilia who thought up and organized this whole ordeal. Of course. She was the one behind this. This world is only a game, silly. There's a decent chance this sets up another turning point in the game. Elephus, what would you do to coax Lord Claude's poor, clouded mind into remembering his past, pray tell? Nothing too complex. I would expose him to memorable things from his past. That might do the trick. Well, his exposure to me didn't do a single thing. Oh, boo, I'm not memorable. Don't despair, miss. I doubt that's the issue. The power you hold and his memories are at odds. You can't overlook the holy sword you wield. You're saying the power from the sword has something to do with it? Yes. His magic and memories are intertwined, and the sword trumps his magic. Interacting with demons that have magic more similar to his own might stimulate his memory. Good idea. My love has always had a close bond with his demons. On the subject of demons, people have been notifying the paper en masse about sightings around town. The darlings must have abandoned the forest to search for Lord Claude. What a coincidence. Could this little inspection have something to do with the demons? Oh, here you are. This is from Didi. He says it's a blueprint. Perfect. Thank you. Explain. What are the blueprints for? Just a few preparations to be safe. Well... 
Care to fill me in on your next scheme? With pleasure. I mean to infiltrate this inspection. Listen, darling. If you see me out and about during the inspection next week, be sure to cover for me, okay? What? But why? You expect me to protect an intruder? How dare you barge in here? <laughs> it's been three whole days. Please, just who do you think you are? That's simple. I'm your fiancé. Only temporarily. <laughs> I'll have to make it so that I am to your body like water and you'll slowly wither away without me. <laughs> I brought a treat. An apple pie baked with the utmost care and love. No, thank you. Uh, what's that you're reading? Hardly any of your concern. <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? Fun isn't anywhere near the word I'd use. Do you know, I've never experienced unrequited love before. I find it a bit thrilling. Uh, Lord Claude, are you awake in this? <gasps> Stay and don't utter one peep. Good morning. You're looking well today. Why, thank you. Is there something that you needed? We simply came here to notify you of a few changes to the inspection route. And to hand deliver these cookies I baked for you. Would you like to have some? Oh, what's inside there? It smells like sweets. Yes, that's, uh, just a little something I had the servants throw together in case I got hungry. Oh, so your sweet cravings are satisfied. Too bad. What am I supposed to do with these, then? Fear not. For they won't go to waste. Prepare some tea and we'll eat them right now. Lovely! <laughs> he can eat her crusty cookies, but not my apple pie! Circling back to the inspection. There's been an unprecedented amount of demons within city limits. Demons, you say? We shouldn't have issues. But the knights in training will be on patrol just in case. Only the littlest of demons have appeared so far. Oh, I forgot! I have an appointment to get fitted for my inspection dress. I should get going. Cedric, must you leave as well? No, I can stay for a while. Now wait a minute, Lord Claude. You've still yet to try one of my delicious cookies, yes? I can't leave until you at least take a bite. Ready? Say, ah. <laughs> this feels highly inappropriate. I would hate for your beloved to get the wrong idea. Hush, you're my in-law-to-be, meaning the two of us are family now. Cedric won't get upset over something so small, will he? Lilia, my brother is a sensitive man. Don't trouble him. Hmm. Understood. It was so nice to see you. I'll come again soon. No respect! And that cookie stunt? With another woman's fiancé, no less? Apologies for her behavior. She's grown rather spoiled lately. <laughs> what? The intruder! No, oh, give it a rest! Prince Adrik had already caught on that I was here. Is that true? Yes, I recognized her basket almost instantly. Hmm. I'd expect nothing less. Lady Lily is an excellent baker, yes? Yes, seems so. I'm leaving uh, here. More treats? Why give them to me? Well, they're rubbish now, and rubbish belongs in the bin. What's that? The bin? You dare call your prince a trash can? Just wait, dear. Next time, I'll bring treats so grand these cookies will seem like kibble. I prefer you didn't. See you boys at the inspection. Hold on. You're really planning to come? So, did you find anything out? Only that unrequited love isn't fun for long. Pardon my saying so, but perhaps you should show him this more emotional side of you. If there was love between you, it may awaken it. No! The last thing I want is a love born from pity. Eileen! It's urgent! A fight! Come quick! <gasps> It's mine! Give it back! No chance in hell! It's incense, not some toy! You think I care? What matters is it's mine! Why are you...
you at the Capitol in the first place. Lord Claude let you go under one condition, that you never step foot outside Mircheta. Don't bring up the past. This is none of your business regardless. How long have they been like this? Well, approximately since the moment August found her snooping near the Imperial Castle while he was out on patrol. Not nearly oh, You are so far out of line! It's been a while, Selena. If it isn't Eileen Lorento Trish, thanks for crushing my dream of never seeing your face again. You came to the capital in hopes of seeing Prince Cedric, correct? The reason you travel so far is to access someone of high status that could back you. I imagine Lady Lilia was your first target, wasn't she? And when your little idol couldn't be of assistance, you moved on to her fiancé. <laughs> I understand. Prince Cedric has the power and sway to protect a woman like you. I wouldn't be surprised if you've toyed with the idea of becoming his mistress. <laughs> well, aren't you astute? You're his ex-fiancé, after all. His mistress? Really? My parents' grand plan was to force me to marry into some upstart noble family anyway. If that's my fate, there's no harm in hunting at the top of the food chain to better my position! Hmm. You're an intelligent girl. This may well be a risk worth taking. I'm glad you understand. Now release me from this horrid place. August, sands the incense. Return her things. But... <sighs> you know, if you find yourself in a place to sell information, reach out. What? It shouldn't come as much of a shock that I can be quite the big spender when I'm so inclined. <laughs> I can escort her out, ma'am. Do whatever you want. Last chance. You sure? That was all news to me. I had no idea that she was being made to marry after she graduates. Everyone has their demons. Surely you know that by now. I always found her to be cruel and quite foolish, too. I despise the innocent facade she'd hide behind. In retrospect, I can see she was trying her best. But now that you understand those things, you have all the more reason to face her honestly. That makes sense. Yeah, you're right. I have to go before I'm too late. For a girl who admired Lady Lilia more than anyone, I'm surprised that you're going after her fiancé. My life depends on it. It's not as if I have any choice. It was my very first instinct to go to the Holy Sword Maiden for help, but... Is that woman in your way? Oh, no. I'm having a bit of a hard time, is all. <gasps> She's extreme. It isn't worth the risk. Stealing her fiancé seems even riskier. How do you know that things will work out? I don't, but it's easy to gamble it all when you have nothing left to lose. Selena! Uh, Allow me to escort you out. Please, I just need a few moments to properly apologize. I can't condone what you did to James, but... But what? Let me take a stab. But you want to be able to think of yourself as a thoughtful and caring gentleman? No. Please, hear me out. I hope you never speak to me again. You make me sick. <sighs> Your carriage will be well protected. These knights in training will ensure that. You can be at ease now, gentlemen. <laughs> May I present to you Eileen Kawa? He will be acting as the team's leader. What? But why? This person is the leader? This one? This boy? Yes. He may not look fearsome, but this strapping young lad was able to take down one of our most formidable knights. Huh. He defeated a knight? Indeed, and I've heard he has the potential for much more. The potential for what, I wonder? Eileen, please escort his highness to the carriage. Everyone else, prepare for departure. Sir! Right this way, your highness. Just what game do you think you're playing here? You'll be beheaded if they see you. Please, none of those aristocrats.
gods are daft enough to behead the fiancé of Lord Claude, though I suppose that means you'll have to stay engaged to me. Are you threatening me? Say they do behead you. So? That would mean I'd finally be rid of you. <laughs> Save your breath. She won't be convinced. She's simply that type of woman, I suppose. You have duties to attend to, or do you want me to expose you? <laughs> I'd like to see you try. That would make a rather excellent excuse for me to send you straight to hell. What did you just say? Could have been worse, Princey. I could have mentioned your fun times with Selena. Selena? What are you going on about? All right, go ahead and play dumb if you so choose. These witty retorts are meant for my ears only. I don't banter with waste receptacles. You! If you're so witty, then think of a new insult! The two of you get along well. What? You clearly have no further need of me. I'll be outside. Mm. Lord Claude, wait! Please! Do not come anywhere near me again. <sighs> You'll never change, will you, Eileen? <sighs> no wonder my brother's been so worried lately. <laughs> Lord Claude's been worried? But why? Lady Eileen, the carriage is nearing departure. Oh, thank you. And are things going to plan? Indeed. The appropriate preparations have been made. Additionally, I uncovered the mastermind behind the inspection. The mastermind? You mean it wasn't Prince Cedric then? It was some official by the name of Lester Crane. He was also the one who drafted the inspection route. That name? He's a romanceable character from the first game. He had a rather calm and militant nature. I wonder, since Lady Lilia knows the contents of the game, has she already captured his heart? It's as I thought. Distancing myself from Eileen is of paramount importance. She's a link to my past, after all. Apologies for the wait, Lord Claude. <laughs> and where might Cedric be? Unfortunately, he suddenly fell ill. He's going to stay at the castle and rest today. As his fiancée, shouldn't you be by his side? I worry how we'll be perceived, us two traveling alone. Don't be a worry, Wart. You're my future brother-in-law, therefore this is completely acceptable.
we won't need the sedative. He's bigger than I expected. <sighs> That's my cue. Now you want me to take the Demon Lord and the others to the capital? Yes. And to keep up appearances, tell them the Holy Knights took the Demon into custody. Always scheming. Please, you've seen nothing yet. If you don't mind, go ahead and release Lord Claude. Understand my lord's wish. Sir, we strive to follow your orders as best we can. As such, if you order us away, then away we shall go. My lord Claude, seems I must be on your mind all hours of the day. If ridding yourself of me is your greatest desire. No. Now flash a smile. You're a pro these days. First rule of unrequited love. Set your expectations at zero. But still... Still, wishing for her to disappear was cruel, and I didn't raise you to be so rude, especially to the fairer sex. Now listen here. I didn't wish that. I just acknowledged the fact that we shouldn't get any closer. Interesting. Your true feelings must have gotten warped when they were transmitted to the demon. How are you feeling about the whole situation, my lord? There were traces of poison on the dresser, so I purified it. Damn humans. Next time, we should think before we ignite, my friend. What's there to think about? 
Extinguish the fire, Bio. My lord, give us your orders. One request. I must see Eileen Lorendo Trish. Make certain she attends the ball. Seriously, not going to go? Oh, please, I just have better things to focus on. My career, for example. As long as business is booming, to hell with the engagement. It matters not if I'm disowned. For someone so done with the Demon Lord, it's odd that you're still living in this castle. Hey, unfair! Almond and the rest of the demons begged me to stay. They even choreographed a little Don't Leave Us dance. Lady Eileen, I have a delivery for you. What's this? Your dress! The ball is two days away! What is going on here? It's quite simple, really. My lord instructed me to give you this dress and order you to attend the ball. <gasps> Go, Eileen! <laughs> but why? After all that man put me through? No! I absolutely refuse to go! No matter how you whine in dissent, orders are orders, yes? Or would you prefer execution? Even without his memories, my lord is still the man he was. He'd rather die than let go of the things he holds dear. You think he holds me dear? Really? Even after I slapped him? I wouldn't be surprised if that made him fall in love with you all over again. And there's no way you can convince me to go! Save this stubbornness for another day. Go! Go! Demons! Commence with the Lord Claudius calling gangs! exactly how much force I should use to caress you. Huh? Keith gave me some advice. He told me to bring my face close to yours and whisper your name. Please, that sounds like utter nonsense. What good would such a thing do? Eileen. Huh? Eileen. <laughs> 
I see now. You're not quite as experienced with men as you led me to believe. You had me fooled indeed. No, you just caught me off guard, that's all. I have boatloads of experience. Interesting. Care to prove it? What a crude suggestion! We're not husband and wife! Hear me when I say, Eileen, I am in love with you. In love with me? Do you really mean that? I do. I love you dearly, Eileen. I want to make you cry, laugh, and spoil you so rotten you can't live without me. You still feel that way even without your memories? Whether I have my memories or not, it seems my love for you doesn't change. The two of us are fated to be. After all you did, you think that a few romantic words will make me forgive you? More or less. <laughs> no, I want to call off the engagement. If you'll entertain me, I do have a better solution. Listen here. First, I'll give you full control. Until you're able to forgive me, you can do anything you want to my body. Absolutely not! <laughs> I must admit I'm disappointed. I was eager to see what you'd do. We could have gotten even closer. So, well, that's a far cry from our previous conversation. What happened to you? They say that love changes people, don't they? You, you think you can worm your way out of this by batting your eyes? Oh, curses. I need to give it up and forgive you, don't I? Now, come along, dear. Let's head back inside. We have to dance together. That will show the people where we stand. I need a minute to fix my makeup. You can go back to the party and I'll meet you there shortly. I'd hate to part from you for even a moment. And you look beautiful just as you are. Please, you have to give a lady time to ready herself. If you send me out in front of those people in this state of disarray, I'll put my duck head back on! <laughs> Fine, be quick. I'll be anxiously awaiting your arrival. You're a truly remarkable woman. Few could earn a man's love by slapping him in the face. <laughs> Is that my legacy? I'll find a lip color that matches your dress. You can stay right there. I can hardly believe it. Lord Claude said he loves me. You look happy, Lady Eileen. Are you glad you came to the ball? Tell me, what's the meaning of this? I thought true love was the stuff of fiction. Your fairy tale ending caught me off guard. At this rate, the Demon Lord may well regain his memories. I can't have that. When I played the game, he helped restore Claude to Demon Lord status. His original plotline made me completely drop my guard. I found you to be an incredible master. How I wish I had met you before I met her. Seems you're in a tricky spot. So, who is this primary master you're being forced to betray me for? A monstrous woman, and I'll keep it at that. Poor man. Never fear, your lady will step in and save you. Too late. Almond? Don't worry, he's alive. For now. Coward! You took an innocent soul hostage? When does innocence stop and stupidity begin, though? The ignorant fool didn't expect a thing. <laughs> and now, it's time for the actors to take their places. Actors? Lester, come quick. Lady Eileen is using incense. What a shame. We all thought so highly of you. To call that acting is an affront to art itself. I shouldn't get into the details now. It seems she was planning to use demon incense to make those wretched beasts attack. <laughs> she wants to turn the Crown Prince back into the Demon Lord. Then she'll have him use his monsters to usurp the throne. My, what a terrifying notion! We should have the wench executed immediately! You're right. 
We can't allow her to get away with this. I regret to inform you that isn't all. Lady Eileen has been intimately involved with various men. Many of whom while she was the Crown Prince's fiancé. What? You lie! Go on. Convince your beloved that it's true. If you value the life of your crow, that is. <sighs> your Highness, you recognize this man, don't you? It's come out that he and Lady Eileen have spent many a salacious night together. <sighs> Apologies, my lord. I have betrayed you. Completely. Well, I... I didn't act alone. We've both wronged you. Now clarify. Who's we? Is he trying to say that... Uh, why you? Oh, uh, sir, uh, come uh, down! Uh, my lord, I have not a concern about my own life. But I beg you, please just spare my precious Lady Eileen. How dare you spout such utterly unfounded lies! You can't believe him! It's his word against my own! I deny the truth. You came to me a lonely and fragile woman in search of company. You told me that I was the only man you felt you could trust. Was all of that a lie as well? Stop this at once! Tell me you love me, that's all I need. If you can do that, I'll believe every word you say. Uh, silly me. I should have said I love you too when I still had the chance. <sighs> You're such a fool. Eileen. I tried my damnedest to conceal my feelings. I mean, you are the crown prince after all. But everyone has their limits. And I find the thought of being loved by you revolting. That can't be so. Oh, I assure you it can. Why would a human love a demon lord? It defies the very laws of nature. My, have you forgotten what you are? Under that fanciful mask that you so proudly wear, you are a demonic monstrosity! Stop right there! My lord! She is lying! Just forget all of that, Drek! I know that Eileen lies! He shouldn't have done that. side and is under his protection. I'm sure he's fine. The knights draw closer as we speak. If we don't do something quick, they'll surround us. You can't give up, Eileen. A demon lord's wife wouldn't surrender. Right. First, do you have an escape route prepared? Who do you think I am? You built an underground labyrinth? Uh-huh. We should be able to get outside the capital from the castle now. 
With all the supplies stashed in here, we could be self-sufficient for six more months. How brilliant you are! And the demon moles love the tunnels. Oh! And per your request, Beelzebub, I tried to make everything look extra ominous. This is truly extraordinary work. <laughs> Now listen up, everyone. I know many of you have felt uneasy without the steady presence of our Lord around. So as of this moment, I will take on the role of Lord Claude's proxy. This may come as a surprise to many of you, but in a single instance of emergency, I have been granted the power to bestow orders in place of our Lord. Is that true? Indeed. Lord Claude laid this magic a while back, just in case there was an emergency. The spell's called... Provisional Demon Lord! All demons, be gone from this place while you can. Stay far from the Imperial Capital and unknown humans. reason they're late. We all recall the predetermined meeting place, yes? If something happens, you know where to go. Bad news! Bad news! The cavalry is coming! Escape all you can! That was fast. We'll be cornered soon. Allow me to act as your decoy. I'll pretend to be you, Lady Eileen, and lead their men far away from your trail. No, I can't condone that. We will not leave you behind. Don't worry about me. Find the demons and make sure they're safe. But, but Rachel... Well, Isaac? Good luck. You let her go? It'll be fine. We'll see to it that she's safe. I think I should come along with you. Having someone who can communicate with demons will give you an advantage. <coughs> I'll be fine, I promise. Be safe. <coughs> It's almost like you wanted to be found. What else would you expect flying a demon of this size? <laughs> Make one move and you're a dead man. A fall from this height isn't going to be pretty. <laughs> now, tell your demon to fly us to the palace. Are you daft enough to believe I do as you say? <laughs> the sword is activating on its own. <laughs> I understand they're planning a coup d'etat. 
If you can't stop them, then the Levy family really will go extinct. I fear you're right. It's as Lady Lilia said. The future cannot be altered. Lady Lilia? So she's who you're working for? Uh, no. The horrid master I spoke of before is the Dowager Empress. I fancy Lady Lilia, though she doesn't fancy me. Hmm. Why do you glare as if I've said something unforgivable? No reason. Go on. <sighs> Our first encounter was about six months ago. I remember it well. Let me guess. She said something like, It breaks my heart to see all your heroic efforts go to waste! And after that, you couldn't get her out of your mind. Too easy. Let us not destroy any more of my treasured memories. You would benefit from some tact. Toughen up. So, after that, she told you that the Levy family would be destroyed at this rate? Yes, exactly. Ah, <sighs> just as I thought. What you might not know is that she got her hands on another holy sword. Huh? I borrowed the sword from her, and well, I should say, I'm sorry. This has all been my fault. I fell for her scheme. She got Eliphas on her side early, which set him on a completely different path from the original game. I would break out of this cell, but I unfortunately lack the magic. What? How could that be? You absorbed all my power with your holy sword. And after that, we managed to crash directly into my homeland. I see. My sword swallowed up your magic. I was curious as to where this newfound energy came from. Huh? See? They want to save their lord. <gasps> I 
hope you've regained power. Because I'm going to need someone to catch me. <laughs> Lady Eileen, wait! <laughs> Sunset. We won't wait a moment longer. I can easily transport the two of us to the capital. But what'll we do once we get there? We discuss this. Very generally, yes. In order to break the spell, we must place this in the Empress's magical tool. Trouble is, I don't know where this tool is. Eileen! Can you hear me? Eileen! Does anybody else hear that voice? <gasps> It's James! Where are you? Is everyone all right? We made it inside the palace. We're alive, and we found Lord Claude. He's been drugged with demon incense to the point of unconsciousness. And the oh, Imperial God. Army has us surrounded. Is Rachel safe? Yes, though she fought harder than any of us. Oh, and I'm sure that the incense riled the demons. It caused Lord Claude to cry out. If he regains power, it'll disperse. And we have no idea how to stop it. All right, listen, Selina. You're familiar with the Dowager Empress's magical tool, aren't you? Her what? Oh, please, weren't you trying to worm your way into Cedric's bed? That should have required careful research about the palace. Even if I were the premier expert, why would I tell you? After Lady Lilia, you are my greatest sworn enemy! Selina, please help. Without your knowledge, we don't know where to begin. I would say the Northern Tower is your best bet. If the rumors are true, it serves as our personal treasure trove. Yeah, that makes sense. The Holy Knights aren't allowed near that area. Well, you two are a great fit for one another. I hope you fall into one of her schemes for good, August. Uh, what is what that exactly supposed to mean? What do you mean by that? Eileen, we'll take care of Lord Claude until you arrive. Prioritize your own well-being. We wouldn't want to upset him. I promise you. For I would never dream of doing anything that would upset my darling. This way. Do you suppose the Levy family hostages are held in the same tower? I do. The Holy Sword? Could it be? happens to our lord, you will pay for it, human. 
That's fine. Just bite my head off and feed my body to the little ones. I would die surrounded by all of my closest compatriots. It would be an honor. Oh, just give it a break. I'm serious. I've been jealous of you and the demons forever. You have a connection to our lord that I just don't. He could be writhing in pain and I'd be the only one who didn't know. What's your plan? Are you horde of heroes going to blindly invade once the sun goes down? You could partner up with our ranks to save Lord Claude if you'd rather. Now why would you humans ever wish to save our lord? If you're all in love with Eileen, isn't he just standing in your way? Uh. <sighs> Though even altogether, you wouldn't have the slightest chance of defeating my lord in order You really to... must learn how to read a room, my friend. Try to understand the complexities of their hearts, please. <laughs> Here's the deal. Why would we help you save Lord Claude? The answer is surprisingly simple. Us humans are foolish creatures. We think if we try hard enough, we can get along with just about anyone. <laughs> anyone, you say? Absolutely, even a demon like you. <laughs> well, that's mankind. Self-serving and extremely arrogant. Please work! Ah! 
I'm up. Somebody need a helping wing. But you... We're dead. Yes, Ovid! You have to help me save your master! And you! Treason. <laughs> Poor little Eileen. All that hard work just to be executed in the end. <laughs> Who are you pointing those swords at? <gasps> says it's true. Well, then true it must be. <gasps> Any idea what's going on here? Lester, we already know it's you who has been purchasing demon incense from the black market. Seems Marcus was manipulated as well. What? Cedric, what are you doing? Lilia, you are a terrifying woman. You carelessly commit these heinous atrocities, then pin them on your peers without regret. <gasps> But, brother, I am responsible for allowing this to unfold. That said, my fiancé's crimes are her own. We concede. Huh? Speak for yourself! I'm done. I will no longer follow you blindly. I'm your puppet no more. <sighs> Even so, this deep love that I feel for you will never fade. Eileen, huh? don't be afraid. Everything's all right now. <gasps> Eileen, come to me. wasted no time and made the announcement as soon as the Emperor and Dowager Empress left the capital. His next order of business was releasing the Levy family. The gracious Lord went so far as to promise them official reparations for their suffering. Our friend Almond is happy and healthy once more. He's currently choreographing a dance for the wedding reception. Eliphas made it out safely as well, and I think he found a boss he'll like even more than the sorcerer who refuses to kill demons. He's the perfect fit for the final boss. As for Prince Cedric and Lady Lilia, I hope they're making the most out of their prison sentence. My future seemed bleak, but the villainous path of 
destruction has transformed into a path of light. No matter what comes our way, we'll be able to defeat it together. Because if we live with love, there's no way we could ever meet an unfortunate end.